And hello, and welcome everyone to the comic multiverse where the worlds of nerd meet. I am, of course, Kate Joel. We're back again, Matt. We took a little week hiatus there, which, you know, we don't normally do. We're normally pretty precise and on time with this show, but uh, sometimes it's good to uh, take some breaks there. You had some stuff to do. I needed to recharge my batteries, and it's good because that means this episode is going to be even bigger because uh, we got all the new Disney Plus stuff that hit. All the new Disney Plus stuff. We got Eternals. We got Shang Chi. Yeah. We got some comic news. Got it. Got it all happening. Got it all going on. I I went to an actual movie last week for the first time in two years. I actually went out to Eternals, and man, I was so excited to eat popcorn and sit in a theater and like, <laughs> oh, how how good's that going to be? I was there for five minutes, and I'm like, hmm. Yes, now I remember that watching a movie with other people rarely has ever increased my enjoyment of the experience. Fuck other people. <laughs> I yeah, I, 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 I like, know. It, it, like, like it, it, it really makes you appreciate like watching movies at home. Tell me about it. I'm like, I had to put pants and cologne on to come out here and sit in the theater, <laughs> and now I got to stay masked, and these people are sitting way too close to me, and there's a lot of fucking children here on a Saturday night. I assumed you couldn't come in. <laughs> you know, because of regulation. I guess not, though. I guess you're fine, children. Yeah, COVID doesn't go after them. No, no, apparently not there. Uh, so I've heard uh, Sh Schmo Schmogan told me that. <laughs> you know, good old Schmo Schmogan. <laughs> but yeah, how, uh, how was your week, Matt? I know you were busy there. Yeah, I was busy for the first part of the week, but uh started slowing down near the end of it. And yeah, no, it was, it was pretty good. I got... um. The Old Republic on the Switch when it released yeah, last week. And I've been playing that. It's the first time I've played the game on a console since it originally came out. Because I've because nice. I've got it on PC, but it didn't, it's never felt the same on PC. Never no, I never just... felt the same. But it was good to get a controller in my hand and play it like mm -hmm. how I used to play it. It's, it's really Feels good. good. Yeah, Feels it, good on the handheld? Are you using the Joy-Cons, or do you have, like, an extra controller? No, I use the actual, like, you know, the controller thing that you slot the controllers in. I just use that. Right. I think I might have to eventually start doing that, because I know I kept getting my ass kicked playing Breath of the Wild, because mm -hmm. A, it was my first Zelda game I've ever played since the Game Boy, and B, there's a lot of buttons going on there. Yeah, uh, as Jaden mentions, the Guardians game also came out, and it yes. fucking ruled. Yes, you've said nothing but good, positive things oh about God. it. I'm like, man, do I do I break down and will that be my Christmas game this year? Do I got to play it on the PC? Because I keep saying I'm going to play all these next-gen games when I get a next-gen console, but fuck knows when that's going to happen. Yeah, I, I would definitely, definitely get it. It's, it's really fucking good. The fact that it's a superhero game that everyone seems to love and everyone seems to be saying nice things about... I mean, really, really uh, should tell us something, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it, I, I am so surprised at the amount of people who, who were praising it and everything. And so many people, yeah. just before its release, it was all doom and gloom because they were like, oh, it's going to be like Avengers. And even yeah, though it's not yeah. made by those people at all. It's, it, we, we had the bad taste in our mouths. We were afraid there. Thank you, Nerd Crusade, for falling there. I'm glad I'm glad all the fears were unfounded. Yeah, it, it's so great and good. And, like, the, the pulls from, like, the comics as yeah, well. Yeah. Like, you fight Adam Warlock. You fight Fing Fang Foom. Captain yeah. Glory. All these characters. I did see some Easter eggs there, and I'm like, oh, boy, they're really going for broke on this one. That's yeah. fucking cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I hope this game gets a sequel. Oh, I'm sure it will now. Cowboy in the chat. Hello, Joel and Matt. Guardians of the Galaxy uh, videos are great. Which game will you post next? I think that's more a question for you than for me. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm not too sure. I uh, I don't even know like what the next like big games coming out really are. I don't think there's not that many until like Elden Ring in February. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, she, I I am so disconnected from video games right now. I'm like going back. <laughs> And trying to finish a bunch of stuff there before again because i'm in between consoles at the moment i want to play yakuza like a dragon mm -hmm. i want to play uh what is it horizon because i've still never played horizon mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah horizon's got, really good i got control sitting here but i'm like ooh, is it better to play it on the five because you know i get the ray tracing and everything i don't know yeah yeah oh and of course because i'm a sucker for uh comfort gaming on friday uh pokemon brilliant diamond and shining pearl comes out on the switch and i'm like oh yeah put put the childhood in my veins i need it let me forget about how shitty the world is for a minute and i i i'm conflicted on whether i i get that or not i i, I might i don't know i know um i i'm going to be getting the new battlefield when that comes out because i've been playing that through game pass because nice. you get 10 free hours of the game 
uh, oh. with, through Game Pass. So I've just been playing that with some friends, and it's, it's been pretty fun. Been pretty fun. Killer. Michael Reese saying there, you guys deserved a week off. Now back to the multiverse mods. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's how it goes. <laughs> I gotta break it down, gotta do the thing. <laughs> Comic Miss explained a new leisure suit Larry might be a big hit. There's, oh, a, yeah. there's a new leisure suit Larry, really? I don't know if I don't know if he's joking or not, or just saying that that would be a big hit. <laughs> yes, that's what the people need. It's called Leisure Suit Larry goes to sensitivity training. <laughs> leisure get, Suit Larry gets canceled. Gets, <laughs> yeah, gets gets his old tweets dug up. <laughs> oh man, he was making some uh, Reddit comments back in 2006. <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah, oh god, these Twitter comments, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, what what did they expect? <laughs> But yeah, I uh, did that. Oh, I think uh, we both watched the same movie too on Netflix. Uh, Harder They Fall. We finally got to see that. Oh, that man. came out while we were away. That was so good. So good. Amazing soundtrack. Oh, I'm not so going to lie. Good. I have been bumping that soundtrack the entire week after I saw it. They do amazing, uh, what is it, a uh, remix of Broader Than Broadway. Uh, I Can Make the Guns Go Bang, mm-hmm. which is like the big title credit song. Holy shit, it's good. Yeah, I, I just like the idea that the movie is, it's like all the characters in the movie are real people, mm-hmm. but the story mm-hmm. is like a fictitious one. And I'm like, that's so cool. Like people should do more of that sort of stuff. It's a great, clever idea, and uh, again, I, I will freely admit, I didn't know who most of those real outlaws were. I did know who Bass Reeves was, because yeah. obviously he's been in so much other shit, he's, like, super famous unto himself. Yeah. But yeah, well, what a what a fucking cool movie. Jonathan Majors is so good to think he's going to be in, like, what, every other Marvel project yeah, now? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Boy, boy, they got him good, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I again, I, I suggest everyone go and watch Lovecraft Country. He's the lead in that, and he's mm. just fantastic. Yeah, he, uh, he hosted Saturday Night Live yesterday, and mm-hmm. I watched it. Mm-hmm. I haven't watched he's that good one at, yet. He's good. He's very funny, and I'm like, oh yeah, says so this. This is why you're going to be in multiple Marvel projects because you're a good-looking dude, great actor, and you're very funny. Yeah, yeah. You got it. You got it all. You tick all the boxes. And uh, if you stick around, everyone will be talking about more movies because, like I said, I saw Eternals. And, hey, Shang-Chi finally hit the Disney Plus app this week, too, which means I finally got to see it months <laughs> after everyone else. Oh, I think you were there with a lot of other people. I know I, so I, I saw some other YouTubers that I follow who hadn't seen it were waiting for, for it to come onto the app, and, you know, rightly so. So if you are ready for some truly ice-cold takes on this movie, <laughs> oh, man, do I got some ice-cold takes for you. <laughs> But uh, yeah, should uh, should we hop to it then? Should we talk about what's uh, yeah. going on in the news? Yeah, let's get into it. So yeah, like we said, the big Disney Plus event was this week where they talked about all sorts of new shit that they got coming down the pipeline for the app. Obviously, a lot of comic stuff, a lot of superhero stuff, even stuff on their animation side. That Baymax show, that Shippendale Rescue Ranger show, they're bringing back the Proud Family, and it actually has more adult jokes now. That's interesting. It, it does, yeah, I, I was kind of shocked at like how adult it seemed. But then again, that's kind of cool because it's like, yeah, we're on an app now. We can do more stuff, and we're assuming our audience grew up with us, which you know mm-hmm. is, uh, which is a pretty bold choice. But it's one I definitely uh, like to see. What was another one that kind of surprised the shit? I mean, oh, they're doing an Ice Age show, which I thought mm-hmm. was funny. I'm like, hey, that wasn't originally a Disney property, but now it is. I, I'm surprised it actually took this long for that sort of Same. for that. To, I would have thought like, uh, who owned a Universal? No, Fox, I Fox, want to say. It was Fox. a Fox thing. So, yeah, uh, I would have thought they would have done something. I know they did those shorts with, like, the, the squirrel and everything, but I would yeah. have thought they would have done, like, a TV show for it. And, like, way more movies than you thought they would have made. Yeah, yeah. Well, what I love about uh, that footage we've seen for that Ice Age movie is they're so clearly giving it the monsters at work treatment where it's like, hey, kids, look, it's all the stars from the movie in much smaller parts because we sure as fuck ain't paying them for every (laughs) single episode. They'll be in five minutes total over this whole season. (laughs) Yep, yep. Man, there's some great, uh, like, footage of Dennis Leary out there where he's like, yo, I love doing these children's movies because they pay you by the line. I'll just sit there and count the words so I know how much money I'm getting paid. (laughs) And I'm like, I respect your honesty. (laughs) Dennis Leary, I respect your honesty. (laughs) He came back for all of them. He did every one. Yeah, well, he counted the words and and realized it was worth it. (laughs) Just enough. The first Ice Age is actually pretty good, everyone. (laughs) 
They get considerably dumber, but the first one is actually okay. I don't think I've seen any parts of the second one, and even then I can't really remember them. Because they all run together. Yeah. Uh, but yes, we have some comic book news, uh, comic book show news coming down the pipeline. We didn't get as much as we thought. We got a lot of posters and a lot of clarification, but one of the big pieces of footage we saw there is we actually got to see a little of the upcoming She-Hulk show. Yeah, we, we got to see a little bit of the upcoming She-Hulk show, some Miss Marvel, and some Moon Knight. Yeah, is what we got. Just little, just little snippets, just little, 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 little taste here to let you know that things are on track and that we'll be seeing them sooner rather than later. I think the biggest standout was, of course, we got to see She-Hulk, kind of. We got to see She-Hulk from the back. <laughs> from the back, and we, we basically confirmed that she's gonna have like the comic accurate costume, uh, and she's gonna be the uh, the thinner version. Yeah, which hey, that's cool. Yeah, I'm fine with uh, that. Uh, and also, too, you know, we got to see, you know, Bruce Banner is going to be in this, too. We see them separated by a thing. I'm like, oh, you filmed this on two separate days, didn't you? <laughs> you are so not in the same room. <laughs> but, you know, he's a CGI creation, so whatever. But, yeah, looks looks good. Everything seems to be moving along. Yeah, I like that little fourth wall break they did at the end of it, uh, where uh, Banner is dressed up like David Banner from, uh, <laughs> from Bill Bixby show. That's and um funny. and she i think it's like a recreation of a scene from that show yeah i think so too yeah i wonder if they're going to keep doing that because i think that's something people forget about she hulk during like the steve gerber years and shit like she broke the fourth wall and was self-aware before deadpool was i hope so yeah because you figure if they gotta you know use something from every era of she hulk they would probably try and use some of that yeah yeah the Captain Kun, Mephisto will be the villain in all of these shows, and Charlie Cox will be in two of these shows. You know what? Uh, I think we can run with that, Captain Kuhn. I think we got some good clickbait articles ready to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which which of these shows is going to have Mephisto in it? Uh, I mean, everyone is the grand unifying villain behind all of it. <laughs> Mephisto's behind it all. <laughs> i love that that's not going away i love that that's only like you know picking up more steam it's like no see the fact that mephisto wasn't in the other shows is actually part of a much bigger conspiracy <laughs> to explain how mephisto is behind it all but what they got to do is they got to actually put mephisto in one of those sh one of the shows but then right at the end reveal that it was like kang fucking with someone like kang it was kang like pretending to be mephisto or something it was trevor slattery again <laughs> <laughs> As Comic Miss Explained also helping us out there, Marvel announces logo. Yeah, that's what a lot of these were. Hey, we got new logos, everyone. Don't they look good? Graphic yeah. design is my passion. Yeah, no, and no, no uh, like confirmation of when it's coming. Just it's coming in 2022. Yeah. Just uh, like no actual date. I would have thought we would have gotten a date for at least Miss Marvel. Same. Yeah, I also thought we would be getting Because I think for that. that's the show that's happening after Hawkeye, which starts next week. Or this week, yes. actually. Oh, holy shit. Yeah, and also they need to make Miss Marvel happen because it's a very important stepping stone to get them to the Marvel's movie. Mm -hmm. Yep. Which is weird that, like, a show is now not technically hamstrunging a movie because it's not a problem yet, but it might be in the yeah. future if they don't get it out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kali Frederick helping us out again there, too. Think we'll see Tom's Uncle Ben in freshman year. Oh, we'll get to that uh Kali don't you worry uh that's gonna be another story we talk about but yes I have many theories and I want to pick Matt's brain too Ooh. but yeah so She-Hulk we got some footage from that uh we got Marvel Zombies which is going to be a show and I mean almost certainly it's going to be a continuation of what we saw in What If in which what is if. also getting a second season because it'll... that ended on such a cliffhanger yeah no well yeah the, the, that Marvel thing it'll either be that and we'll probably get like uh a retelling of like how the how it how mm. uh hank ping brought the the virus into like the real world and whatnot. yeah, yeah. well uh well walking dead it we'll get to see everything that happened from the initial bite <laughs> to how the world fell and everything yeah maybe get to see some other characters who weren't in that short see how all the different places react to it yeah maybe even characters who aren't in the films yet exactly wouldn't that be interesting yeah like hey here's a moon knight episode everybody yeah Moon Knight fighting zombies. Here's Blade fighting zombies. Mm. I'd be fine with it. I'd accept that. Also, too, it's nice to know that 
confirming what we pretty much already knew about Marvel What If. Hey, gang, these were all backdoor pilots, and the zombies episode tested good, so guess what? You're getting a zombie show now. Yeah, kind of like how What If was that anyway? Yeah. Like, to begin, <laughs> like the comics, you know, what, what, what do you like this idea? If you like this, it might stick. Yeah, and this this is, again, yet another key to Marvel Disney's success, and that is taking good ideas from the comics. And I was like, oh, so you put out a whole thing, charged people money for it, and used it really as market research? Yep, yep, we can do that too. Yep, yep, okay. <laughs> this, this also ties into what we were saying before, that apparently Marvel Disney has actually acquired brand new animation studios just to make their brand new animated yeah. shows. yep. Which is great, because it means they're getting serious about it, and even in the back of my head, I'm like, hey, wait, but you're Disney, are, are, aren't you guys in animation? Shouldn't you do this in-house? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't do animation yeah. anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, no. We, we, we occasionally do CG. Isn't that Pixar? Eh, yes. That, that's, what I, that's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting to for when they, uh, when they give the go-ahead to, like, a Pixar Marvel film. Oh, yeah, the big crowd. Well, I mean, technically, that's what Big Hero, big Hero 6, 6 was. Technically, yeah. But and I'm talking like, like, a, like a Pixar, official. like Avengers film or something. Well, hey, did you see those new toys? It's connected to an app game they're doing, but it's like the it's famous... It's universe. It's like a universe, multiverse thing. sort of thing. Yeah, make that a thing. Yeah. Disney Universe is cool. Make that a thing. Yeah. I would watch that. That's what I originally thought it was. Like, I thought it was, like, going to be, like, some sort of cartoon or, like... Like, yeah, like yeah. shorts or something. Hey, man, you know, you can make a great show out of an app game and a toy line. Look at Arcane, the League of Legends show. <laughs> I am blown away how good that is. Yeah, I haven't watched that yet. It is shockingly good. I, here's the thing. It is so good, Matt. I know jack shit about League of Legends, and I still think it's great. <laughs> well, that's good. In fact, I think they're almost betting on the fact that most people watching it know nothing about League of Legends. Well, that's good. And a stellar voice cast, too. Like, some of your favorite people are in it. Cool. So that's good. Oh, hopefully that starts a whole new trend there, where it's like, look, just because it's based on a video game doesn't mean it has to suck. Mm -hmm. uh, now, what else did we have going on after that? Uh, so, yeah, we got the Marvel zombie show. Agatha House of Darkness. Hey, speaking of things that tested well with audiences, you, you love Han, you love Catherine Han a whole bunch, y'all. Yeah, we're just gonna we're gonna secure her for the next however many years, decades. Yeah, gotta lock her down to a contract. Would you just like a whole show about Agatha? This <laughs> this is literally you know Marvel and Disney just you know looking at tweets and making shows. People being like, man, yo, WandaVision's so good, I'd watch a whole show about Agatha. We can do that. Do you want that? We'll do it. We'll do it right now. This this was uh this was um greenlit uh the the morning after that episode aired where it was like revealed she was you know doing it all along. Oh 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 of course <laughs> yes yeah, as, as soon as you know Agatha all along was burning up the Spotify yeah. charts. <laughs> green light it green light it green light it green light it. <laughs> A. Carter helping us out there. Did Bob Cheeks, uh, Cheapskate Chatwick produce Disney Plus Day? Uh, we don't need cameras, live people scripts. Just use Twitter and make them log into Disney Plus. I mean, maybe. <laughs> it probably works. You know, people were talking about these shows. It's true. I mean, th this almost does feel like an experiment in, like, how little work do we need to put in to still get <laughs> maximum retention and, like, social media, uh, like, uh, what is it, coverage. Yeah, yeah. And the answer is they did. I mean, usually this shit happens anyway, but usually it's after like an investor call. We hear about it secondhand. So they're like, look, let's just, you know, tweet about our investor call this year. Yeah. That's pretty much it. And again, it worked fucking weirdly. Yeah. Here's the thing. You you have the app. I should be able to stream and watch this on the app, right? I should be well, able they, to have they put, like they put put up the thing the the like uh like trailers and like the there was like where we saw like the the uh, She Hulk show and all that yeah. just after they were announced on Twitter. Yeah, uh, like but I'm I think to... people were getting it like confused with like them saying it's going to stream on there as it's going to live stream. Where it, no, oh, it's right. actually it's like their movies. It's streaming now on Disney Plus. Like, literally, they should just have little animated Mickey come out in a tuxedo and be like, Ho-ho, oh, everybody, guess what? We got brand new stuff coming to you. <laughs> Here's She-Hulk from the back. Mickey loves She-Hulk from the back. <laughs> Ooh, zombies, they're scary. You can watch them. Agatha, House of Darkness, I fucking love Catherine Hahn so much. Yeah, that's right, Mickey swears now. 
that's that's how I would do it. He's <laughs> allowed. He, he's allowed. He's allowed to swear because it's on on an app. Because it's on an app. Oh, oh, no standards and practices can stop me now. <laughs> now I'm gonna smoke a whole cigarette. It's just Mickey smoking a whole cigarette for two minutes. <laughs> Can't stop him. He's too powerful. <laughs> and speaking of too powerful, Agatha, what do we think this show is about? Is this a prequel for her in witchy times, or is this picking up with her after WandaVision, you think? Well, I mean, we kind of saw her, uh, like, origin there uh, in for WandaVision. A I have to imagine it'll be, like... Like, I, I would actually like it to be, like it'd be like a retread of WandaVision. Um, like, cause mm. she get, she get, she got left in that like dream dimension yeah, thing. And it'd, and it'd be like WandaVision, but like her version of it. So it's kind of all, guess, like yeah. fucked up and everything. And she's got to escape from it or something, I guess something frees Maybe. her. Yeah. Again, you know, with a name like house of darkness or house of Harkness, I guess I should say, yeah, maybe it's about her trying to escape it. Uh, maybe we'll actually see Master Pandemonium in this one. Maybe he'll be a villain in this show. Yeah, I hope we get more Ralph Boner as well. Just because oh, I know yeah, everyone absolutely. fucking hates it, and I fucking love yeah, it. I, maximum Boner, I very much agree. He better be a supporting character <laughs> in this. Again, I really want to know what's up with him and what he's doing, and you know, just you know, how he's dealing with the fallout from WandaVision. <laughs> Can we can we get the twins in this maybe in some factor? Well, I have to imagine they're going to be in uh, uh, multiverse of madness. I guess so. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's going to be more dark comedy. I'm sure it's going to be more like you know Nick at Night, you mm -hmm. know, with some more musical numbers. Why not? Yeah, yeah. I'm. I wouldn't be surprised if it's like a straight up comedy. Same, and I also wouldn't be shocked too if they went the other direction. And maybe this is an excuse to backdoor more spooky magic stuff. Like, hey, yeah. maybe in the Agatha show you discover, yeah, vampires totally exist in the Marvel Universe. They always have. That, that'd that actually be pretty cool because, again, that ties into something we'll talk about a little later on with Eternals. Yeah. I think that would be an interesting way to put it, to be like, yeah, hey, the Agatha show is going to start laying the groundwork for all the mystical, magical stuff we're going to undoubtedly be doing uh, in the other movies and TV shows coming soon. Because that kind of seems to be the theme, right, Matt? Between this and Moon Knight, that sorts to be the direction they're headed now. Yeah, yeah. It looks like they're going that direction. Mm hmm Maybe get Elsa Bloodstone in there. Wouldn't she be fun Ooh. to spin her off Ooh. from the Agatha show? Yeah. Yeah. I would totally watch Elsa Bloodstone, Demon Hunter. Yeah. She can be the new uh, foil for Agatha. Yeah, I like that a lot. See, see Marvel, we got ideas. <laughs> that one's free. The next one's going to cost you. <laughs> now, perhaps the biggest piece of news uh, at the show this year, I was not expecting this, even though I probably should have expected it because it's been so long uh, since we've gotten one, but we're getting a brand new Spider-Man show. Yeah, a, a cartoon, yeah sophomore year i i say new but then it's like no they've actually been doing a lot of these it's just they haven't been directed at us they've been directed at like the youngest of children little kids yeah so obviously you know it wouldn't be for us to really absorb uh captain kuhn helping us out again i get the feeling that agatha's will be a tales from the crypt show to introduce more magical things monsters like ooh. man thing Ooh, that's clever that'd be interesting yeah yeah, it's even more of an anthology than what if. It's just like standalone ghost stories, spooky stories, but at the end, hey, here's a Marvel thing. That's that'd be pretty cool. I like that a lot, actually. There's a lot of backlog of Marvel like horror stories that they could do. Yeah. Huh. But yeah, so Spider Man's uh freshman year. I said sophomore year, it's freshman year. I'm looking at it right here. Derp, don't listen to me, I'm dumb. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's going to be a new animated series, and I get the feeling, again, uh, this is maybe them trying to capture a more all-ages audience in the same way uh, What If has, and uh, what I can only assume they're doing with Proud Family as well. And man, I'm so fucking stoked for this. I love Spider-Man cartoons. It's been so long since we've gotten something like this. And with a title like Freshman Year, my, my mind is filled with ideas about what this show could potentially be. What's about his early years is, is, is like just become Spider-Man. And again, this is MCU canon as well yeah i was gonna say with it being mcu can obviously we saw in uh homecoming peter had a suit a proto suit that he was running around in can we take this to believe that this show is probably going to be everything he did right up into meeting iron man probably probably 
which again that's a fair amount of time to cover and then maybe after you do a season of that you can jump forward for the next season and you know change it to sophomore year yeah i i have to imagine as well that in this show we'll probably see like uh like the spider bite him getting the spider yeah. bite. maybe uncle ben uh, I had a pitch for it. What do you think about this? Uh, Uncle Ben lives until the end of season one. His death is like a big thing. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. That, yeah, they actually keep him alive. Like, you do the Ultimate Comics thing, because, you know, the MCU loves borrowing from the Ultimate Universe. Uncle Ben stayed alive for a long time mm -hmm. in that series. Yep. So I would say, yeah, take some stuff from that. What what villains could we potentially do here that, you know, aren't too big for Spider-Man? I don't know whether he'll actually fight villains. I think it'll just be like... A high uh, school show. Yeah, yeah, and like every now and then it's like, oh, he's got to stop the robbers of the bodega and yeah, stuff like yeah. that, helping people. Because in, in that homecoming, he's like helping people around the neighborhood. That's right. I mean, you could definitely, again, steal an idea from Spectacular and be like, oh, here's Alex O'Hearn and here's the Sandman before they get powers because we know they're just regular run-of-the-mill thugs. Yep. Here's Blackie Gaxton and the Enforcers because they're just like regular dudes. Hey, if Kingpin is allowed back in the universe in the next little bit. You'd maybe have him deal with, uh, instead of Kingpin, maybe Hammerhead. Hammerhead, yeah. Like, again, there's definitely some lower-tier goons that he could deal crime master he's a dude in a suit just all all the suit villains yeah boomerang boom yes please <laughs> that's fine yeah get all the joke villains in there like freshman year you get all the joke villains out of the way yeah question is too uh tom holland's probably not gonna voice his character in this they'll probably get a sound alike um i don't know maybe, maybe they might get the guy who did him in uh what if but i have to imagine if this is spider-man and it's mcu can they might might get him i mean tom holland kind of seems down for everything yeah yeah like he does the rides he does the cruise shows and everything so maybe that, he'll that's be what down i mean like this. he did like all that stuff for like disney the disney parks and stuff so yeah he could easily yeah. do this captain coon his season-long series villain is boomerang i'm totally okay with that yeah yeah i'm so very super okay with that um uh, everyone's saying too maybe this will stop all the iron boy comparisons that some of the more annoying fans love to bring up yeah yeah but but it's spider-man they'll complain either way it's true you know spider -Man something <laughs> isn't right about it you know no one hates spider-man more than spider-man yeah. fans you oh see. absolutely <laughs> like kiss fans and star wars fans <laughs> i love everything about it and i hate everything about it too <laughs> uh actually hey uh if i may toot my own horn for a second here the guy who's show running this and executive producing it uh jeff tramill is the same guy who did craig of the creek so we know he has like an absolutely awesome uh what is it resume he also wrote a digital book for dc and he's gonna have a story in the upcoming uh, dc christmas collection so oh, great nice. great pedigree uh he also follows me on twitter and i've talked to him a couple times so you better believe i'm gonna try and get him on the show and make him tell me everything <laughs> i am so so stoked you know might, might try and really be annoying and try and get a job for myself too so in this spider-man world right you know the kids are on their phone and who's their favorite youtuber maybe it's a handsome canadian i don't know <laughs> i'm just saying just throwing it out there <laughs> for the world but yeah this this is super cool and we're not done yet because we got another big animated piece of news there technically this story broke the day before but x-men 97 a no shit no fool and continuation of the x-men show that everyone liked yeah i didn't expect this to happen no again talk about a thing that i feel is motivated almost entirely by market research and app data and that is hey people sure do love uh streaming this x-men show what if we could make more of it not only that it also gets us ready for the actual mcu x-men mm -hmm. shows them having some actual real interest in telling x-men stories again i, I find this really weird because i'm like well i thought if you do an x-men show you would just do your own thing from scratch but doing like a continuation of a nostalgic thing you gotta get the people literally... in you gotta get the people in i guess i guess so and have it like literally be the next year 97 again like what storylines were still left behind at the end of x-men for them to continue off of and are we going to pretend the last couple shitty seasons when they changed studios didn't happen 
Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I really don't know where they'll go with it for this. Neither do I. Uh, again, uh, Eric Santley helping us out. X-Men 97, should they finish adapting Chris Claremont's era of stories with the 90s aesthetic, adapt other eras with the 90s aesthetic, or create new stories? See, Eric knows exactly what I was talking about here. Like, yeah, because the thing about that X-Men show is that it's so much of the time yeah. that when it was created, like, they, they were adapting, like, shit that was new yeah. is the thing. And so I really wonder, are they going to keep adapting shit that's new? Or are they going to finish the, you know, 90s era stuff at the time? Because, like, shit, if this show is popular and they keep going, in, like, season five, are we going to see them adapt Krakoa? That's what I was thinking, yeah. Like, I, are we going to, like, since it's 97, are we going to get stories that were happening in the X-Men books in that time? Or are they just going to say, like, oh, in this universe, Krakoa happened in 97 or something? Yeah, it's going to get really fucked up, too, because eventually you're going to hit the point, too, when Marvel wasn't really in love with the X-Men anymore and you got the Inhumans. Do they <laughs> adapt that the years when X-Men was just running in place? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Is it is it going to feel weird as a 90s throwback now? Or, like, is that going to be part of the charm? I wonder. Yeah, I, I'm very intrigued to see how they're going to do this. And I, I'm also intrigued to see the, like... The, like animation because they uh, uh, is it going to be like that the animation from yeah, the 90s yeah. like like how that that show that spider-man show the spider-man unlimited show and everything yeah with yeah. that specific type of animation i can't really explain what how it was yeah i but, know yeah. what you mean are, are we doing more cg again I, I know i keep bringing back the proud family but it's interesting that show has it's definitely not the art style it was when it was on tv last time but it is approximating that art style in a way and i wonder <laughs> if they're going to do the same i'd really love if they like keep it consistent with like what we've seen in what if and do that style for the x-men for everything yeah because obviously the marvel zombie shows is probably going to be that maybe the spider-man show is going to be that too because obviously Marvel fucking loves the shared universe and the shared aesthetic, so it would only make sense to put it in that style. And also, <laughs> if you're buying whole new animation studios, it's really easy to be like, hey, make it look like this for everything. Yeah, yeah. Captain Kuhn helping us out again, being a real VIP. X-Men 97 was the safe revive, but Galaxy Brain revival would have been X-Men <laughs> Evolution. Uh, yeah, Kuhn, you and I are of a mind. You're absolutely right. Here's the thing, though. X-Men Evolution at least actually got an ending. X-Men, as classic as it is, just kind of fucking petered out at the end. Yeah, they, they could, like, like, we're talking about, like, stories and stuff they could do. They could, like, marry the two together they where could. you get like some sort of x-men evolution elements in this new show that would be cool i wonder too you know what's the voice cast going to be like because as people in the chat have brought up uh, a lot of the original canadian actors are dead and would disney even want to bring back a bunch of these canadian actors because they live in another well, country i know for a fact that alison court who voiced jubilee yeah, yeah, yeah. isn't uh coming back they're actually casting oh, no. jubilee as a asian american this time Oh, yeah, that's probably good. As as much you know, like here's the thing, I, I will freely admit casting an actual real Asian person as Jubilee is right and good for the times we live in, but my heart will always belong to Allison <laughs> Court because of the big comfy couch and Jubilee and the millions of other things she did. Also, <laughs> hey, when I was at the London Comic Con a couple of years ago, her table was right next to mine. She's still looking really good for her <laughs> age, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> And I'm just like, I should go and talk to her. It's like, nah, Joel, you'll make it weird. Don't do it. <laughs> Stay here, you fucking weirdo. And don't stare either. <laughs> just melting the words, you made my childhood magical. And she's like, yeah, I know. She's like, on Solo happens all the time. <laughs> But yeah, so a lot of interesting stuff to think of. And again, just some damn good powerhouse programming for this Disney app. This is the stuff I'd like to see. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm intrigued to see it all start to uh, uh, come out. I guess like Hawkeye is like re really starts to sort of ramp up because like mm -hmm. 2022 is like when most of these shows are coming out or like coming out at some point in that year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, because obviously, you know, with the Hawkeye show, we're probably getting Echo. Echo is also getting a show. Yep. That spins out of that, which has led many people to believe that we'll probably see Vincent D'Onofrio back at some point because the Kingpin is a huge part of Echo's origin. Yeah, they're, they're really giving her a push nowadays. And I imagine we'll see, like, people think we're going to see him in Hawkeye because mm. obviously Echo's in Hawkeye and everything. And uh, I imagine she's working for him in that. 
Mm -hmm. I probably a safe bet would be she alludes to the kingpin, mm -hmm. but we don't actually. Or see we get him the right at the end of the show. season, like in a post credit scene, and that's the lead into her show. Yeah, quite possibly. Again, it feels the most plausible. Like of all mm -hmm. the crazy galaxy brained ideas, that one feels plausible. Yeah, yeah. Because, again, you don't really have to commit to anything. It's just like, yeah, D'Onofrio comes back for, you know, uh, what is it? Comes back for a flashback. Maybe he's a voice or something. You don't have to explain how it connects to Daredevil yet if you don't want to. Just know that it's him. Well, I mean, saying that, uh, we do know Charlie Cox is coming back. Cause it, uh, is he? Yeah, well, I, I, you probably didn't see it. I think they're on it's still on our Discord, but there's actually legit leaked photos of him oh, really? in Nowhere Home like he, oh, really? he, he's peter parker's lawyer oh shit so, so that rumor turned out to be right huh yeah 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 okay when i'm done here i'll go to discord uh oh we got a lot of uh, friends helping us out here in uh, the donation chat did you see people freaking out oh no what if they make the x-men woke now like oh the horror <laughs> of political social commentary in an x-men story yeah those people are dumb fucks yeah. like the dumbest of fucks yeah they don't read x-men they don't care they don't understand they... that the whole the whole idea of the x-men is like an allegory for like racism and and yeah. stuff like that and again, they love their stupid copy-paste answers where it's like, no, the problem isn't politics. The problem is radical politics. And I'm like, dude, you know Xavier and Magneto are based on Martin Luther King and Malcolm X, yeah, who were considered incredibly radical in their day for daring to say that white and black people should, you know, be able to get along and live side by side and everything. I think you have a very different take on what radical means, you dumb fuck. Maybe read up on Magneto and his whole deal, his whole deal has been being yeah. a radical like political uh person yeah yeah pretty much <laughs> again whenever people say that i don't want politics you know i don't want things to get woke what they're really saying is i'm a bad person and i idolize bad people and i don't want my entertainment to call me out on being a bad person <laughs> i can still enjoy it if i do mental backflips yeah but i can't do mental backflips <laughs> when i am literally called out when the show points at me and says yeah you and maybe instead of getting mad about that, you should do like a personal inventory and maybe <laughs> wonder why you suck. <laughs> uh, Rebel Friend helping us out too. I think the Spidey show is going to be 2D animation. Comic artist Leonardo Romero is doing the character designs. Oh, okay. Cool. Huh. Nice. I mean, obviously, I mean, yeah, I think like a lot of artists were finally able to admit like, hey, I'm working on this. I'm working on this. Isn't that cool? That's cool. Uh, Eric again helping us out. Uh, would X-Men 97 lean more into LGBT coding and feminist ideas from the house? Yeah, probably they could. Yeah. Again, I think being an app, you know, the chains are off. They can do whatever they want. Yeah, not only that, I, I, again, that it probably feeds into as well as like uh, what stories they'll be taking uh, yeah. cues from. And again, if they take cues from Krakoa, that, that stuff is like really prevalent in Krakoa. Oh yeah, moment. yeah. So that. yeah, it'd be really cool to see all that sort of stuff like Emma Frost becoming like a big major player and everything. yeah. yeah. And, battles with the russian government yeah what's uh what's that story where wolverine gets his metal uh ripped out of his body because i know they haven't they did they didn't actually adapt that story and they're probably at the point where they could have adapted it if they're doing the 90s stuff yeah oh yeah like the classic one where magneto rips it all out of him yeah that's one yeah. they couldn't do and if it's on an app they could do it and make it pretty gross <laughs> yeah yeah and then they can do dumb, savage Wolverine with the bandana <laughs> around his face and the pig nose. Oh, God. No, thank you. No, thank and you. Make their, and make their, make up their own reason as to how he got the metal back. Yeah. <laughs> they'll, they'll do that. Uh, so what else do we got going on here after that? Uh, ooh, uh, some more comic news, this time coming from the world of DC, because we got to cover a little of everything. New four-issue Shazam miniseries starring Mary Marvel as the main Shazam from Josie Campbell starting soon. Yeah, she's going to be taken over from uh, Billy. Sure, why not? You you had the best tweet about this, Matt. What was your tweet? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm going to be reading it just because it's going to piss so many people off who don't like understand that she's literally yeah. in that role already <laughs> yeah and also the fact too that like yo it's kind of hard to like process it now because you know time has been so weird and dc publication has been so weird mary marvel was always as popular if not even a little more popular mm -hmm. than shazam was mm -hmm. 
Like, it's crazy to think now because she's been a little bit relegated because they kept having to restart the Shazam series to try and get it in line with the movie. She was always wildly popular, yeah. and writers loved writing her, and artists especially loved drawing her. It's why a version of her is on Justice Incarnate at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's why. Yeah. So this actually makes perfect sense, and I assure you, if this four-issue mini takes off, they're going to do more. Yeah, absolutely they're going to do more. And this is also a great way too. Cause it's like, Hey, we've kind of buried Shazam in our own universe a little bit. He had a mini that just ended. So let's not, tr why don't we try a new mini? Cause obviously it's not just Billy in the new movie. Cause you know, they all got spin off potential if we do it right. Absolutely. So it's really smart. They're like, yeah, we should remember that Mary is cool and popular. And yeah, she's covered with spinoff potential if we do it right. Yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to it. It, it, it looks like it's going to be good. See, I'm interested, though, how they're going to differentiate it from uh, Billy's Shazam. Same. I mean, is, is Billy still at the Titans school now in that book I stopped reading? Uh, yes, yes, kind kind of sort of he, I mean, he 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 they 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 all found out he was um shazam because because right. no one at the school knew who he was and they they played up the idea that he didn't have powers and all that sort of stuff mm. um but then people found out he was in his miniseries drake drago evil mary marvel was my childhood crush i think a lot of people would agree actually when she had the black costume a lot of people everything. had some awakenings then <laughs> like, oh oh i hope this doesn't awaken anything in me oh drag that or but, when, uh, when yeah. kara had the black costume as well was very popular at the time yes uh, i mean obviously they could just really zero in on the fact that like yo mary's older and like you know she's a young adult there's i think a lot of story mm -hmm. you could tell in that yeah, she she has to she has to have like a job and like a social life outside of like a school yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, like I think she was still living at home at the end of the John Shazam series. Maybe it's her finally going off to college. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's yep. her away from home for the first time. Yeah, that'd be cool. A lot of places you could go with that book. I uh, I think this is going to be strong, and the art from it makes it look really good too. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, what do we got after that? Uh, ooh, uh, speaking of the girl power here, new villain Queen Goblin set for debut in The Amazing Spider-Man because obviously Ben is the Spider-Man now. We're trying to do a bunch of new stuff for him, and it wouldn't be a new Spider-Man series, Matt, if we didn't get a new Goblin villain. It's basically tradition. Yeah, no, of course it is. Yeah, it's only a matter of time. I love a lot of people who are quick to say, wait, isn't there already a Goblin Queen, Madeline Pryor? No, no, no. That's the Goblin Queen. She's the Queen Goblin. <laughs> Big difference, you see. You see the words, they got moved around a little bit. <laughs> and, you know, hey, speaking of black leather dominatrixy costumes, <laughs> holy shit. I know, right? <laughs> What's, what's her big villainous plan? She's going to turn Spider-Man into a pay pig. <laughs> <laughs> Is that her new problem? Is She's coming after thing? him to, like, force him to subscribe to her OnlyFans. Oh, OnlyFans, yeah. Oh, no, I don't want to. Oh, I'm going to put in my credit card information. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Uh, I like to, you know, she's got, uh, what is it, like two pumpkin bombs on like on a the big chain, yeah. 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 And one's smiling and one's frowning, like, because it's, cause it's like the queen card in like a suit of cards. I'm like, oh, that's clever. Yep. Also, too, because, you know, you can't do a goblin story without also making it a mystery story. I know you've been keeping up with Spider Man, Matt. Who, who's the early over under on who we think Queen Goblin is? Hmm. Uh, what's it? Uh, Ben's girlfriend. Janie. Yeah, that that's a good one because obviously Janie is kind of being, you know, abused and manipulated yeah. by the people at Beyond. So maybe she snaps under the pressure and becomes a villain, and that would be <laughs> really bad for Ben to have to fight against her. Similarly, uh Maxine Danger, I cannot believe that yeah. is her real name. Yeah. yeah. His new shitty boss at Beyond, because obviously we've seen goblins be evil industrialists before so that makes sense and also kind of ties into her idea too where it's like oh well he's our spider-man he's our product and you know if we want spider-man to really take off as a product spider-man always needs to fight a goblin so we'll just create one. yeah we'll, we'll create one and it'll be like a fake news thing to like sell this yeah. new spider-man to the public 
because that very much seems to be their thing. Who who do we think Beyond is? Is Beyond supposed to be Sony? Is that the thing? Because they're clearly <laughs> supposed to be some evil corporation that's fucking around with Spider Man. It it kind of does feel like that, especially after like the last two issues. Like like this company's coming and they're they're very like specific on like he he has to do this and this and this and be here at this particular time and this particular time. It does feel like that, doesn't it? Yeah, because they're clearly manipulating everything. And, you know, Ben will find that out. It's like, oh, I haven't really been a hero this whole time. You have been puppeteering me. Yeah, and there's the whole thing as well as, like, like Peter Parker isn't the real Spider-Man. It's like, because we don't technically own him because mm. he's on Mar- he's in Marvel Studios films at the moment. Yeah. So we'll create our own Spider-Man with Ben Riley. Out of cloth. <laughs> Yeah. And even too, like there was a moment in the last issue where they were basically having a pitch meeting and it's like, oh, he's dying of Morbius's vampire bite. Do, do we give him the antitoxin? She's like, well, we could, but let's think about that for a minute. <laughs> if he was a vampire, would that be good? Maybe he'd have would new powers? Would sales go up? <laughs> well, would it go up? It's like, uh, well, we would have no way of knowing it could do it or it could kill him. Well, I guess you better give him the anti-venom then. But it's good to have these thought exercises. <laughs> so that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah this this is a cool design actually again and it means that when i eventually do a video breaking down all the different goblin people i'll get to put this one in there too yeah, just another one on the list another one and then there's the ones that like does that count like when phil Urich was the king goblin and then there was <laughs> menace and monster do they technically count or no yeah in fact, some people saying, is it just Menace again? Did Menace come back, but now she's queen? Maybe, who knows? Yeah. Could be. Could be, could be. Uh, all right, moving on from that. Uh, oh, here's an interesting news on the production side of comics. Again, this was on the news list last week. It's mostly been cleared up now. But uh, Diamond Comics came under attack by some ransomware, and apparently it really fucked up their production, which is why a lot more comics are being delayed now. Yeah, that, that, that was funny. That was funny. <laughs> Man, I bet DC and Marvel felt so good at knowing that they had broken ties with this company. <laughs> It really played into the stereotype that we've been saying forever that Diamond is old and out of touch and, you know, unable to govern themselves, that they literally fell for, like, the biggest old man scheme ever. Oh, free Viagra pills. I better (laughs) click this attachment right now. Oh, we've lost control of our company. Shit. (laughs) Because that's what I want to know. Like, who clicked what attachment and how did this happen? Who opened what email? Who accepted what, like, text or something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) singles in my area want to mingle oh i better do that <laughs> oh we lost control we lost control of diamond everybody sorry they, the the ad they clicked the targeted ad they clicked was something like like get marvel and dc back like yeah. click here or something and some fucking boomer intern guy just clicked it <laughs> It was a text message from marvel and dc hey you up diamond <laughs> Click link for hey, more. This is the yeah. real DC. We want to come back. <laughs> the real DC. I, you know, we joke, but I bet it was equally as pathetic. Yeah. <laughs> now they've mostly cleaned this up by now, but as we've seen before, it only takes like a week of you know stoppage to really fuck up the release of comics. And obviously DC and Marvel there aren't aren't with them anymore. But if you're an indie company, this is really gonna fuck you up because you need that those sales and you need to be on time mm-hmm. and Diamond fucked everybody once again. And I imagine I wonder if this is gonna like uh make people like those indie companies try and like determine whether they should leave. How could it not? Especially because you know DC has its own, you know, uh distribution house uh what is it with that con company their name escapes me now but they have it and marvel of course has their deal with penguin you have to wonder if these companies are like well can we take on other people yeah and like is there anything stopping marvel and dc uh branching out to these and saying hey you will distribute for you we'll get like a small cut yeah you know just set up their own sort of distribution for them yeah, I mean, I guess that just comes down to, you know, are they more interested in the creative side of things or would they actually want to tackle the distribution side of things, which is obviously, you know, it's uh, would come with its own issues and its own troubles and everything, but might ultimately be worth it when this horrible dinosaur of a company 
yeah is is getting freaking cyber attacked and getting everyone locked out of their computers until they you know pay them in fucking bitcoins or nfts or whatever the hell yeah, it'll be those fucking out. monkey nfts someone mentioned it too this comes at an interesting time too when image is you know thinking and finally like making plans to unionize and maybe that would be another thing where it's like yeah you know we as you know creators also want a stake of the distribution as well yeah <laughs> now again from what i understand uh while well, i am fully in support of diamonds unionization methods and i think it is only a net good for them in the entire industry i do think it is very sad that you know a bunch of the image people are like we're unionizing and the higher ups at image are like no you're not <laughs> yeah yeah so so much for the creators yeah we don't recognize this we don't no. recognize your uh, right to unionize it's like motherfucker like you said about, do you forget how your company was started <laughs> hey, hey hey todd mcfarlane you're part you're you're part of the higher ups here what are you doing oh you're just talking about sales for your books not actually talking yeah. about this <laughs> and selling his own nfts while we're at it <laughs> yeah <laughs> goddamn fucking nfts what i love about nfts is everyone knows it's a scam (laughs) everyone knows it's a grift but everyone wants to get in on the ground floor because they figure if they're quick enough they can be the grifter or not the grifty i saw one uh one creator they 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 sold one an nft for like 35 grand and, uh, and it, what was really funny about it was like uh, they did the video it's like we just sold this one nft to 35 grand so i'm sending like the person like an actual uh, piece of the art that like an actual physical copy of the art sort of thing uh to say thanks but like i i've after that they tried to make up like the reasoning it's like oh we tried this nft just as like mm. a, an experiment i'm like yeah it's yeah it's a joke that, yeah that, that 35 grand definitely is a joke yeah 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 there's a lot of that going on like oh i'm doing nfts ironically see it's yeah. a joke that i make but also if people want to pay me thousands of dollars they should totally pay me yeah. thousands of dollars for it yeah <sighs> nfts more like no fucking thanks <laughs> now uh moving on from there uh, we got a little bit more news about superior uh the superior four which is going to be a big devil's reign tie-in uh we knew it was going to be doc ock coming back out of the shadows and uniting with different multiversal versions of himself what we didn't know is that these are some very familiar multiversal versions of himself he's joining forces with yeah some very exciting looking ones Yes, it's going to be, uh, what is it, uh, Dr. Octopus Wolverine, Dr. Octopus Ghost Rider, and Dr. Octopus Hulk. Yeah, the, I like the Hulk. that look, He looks like Goro from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Very much so. And if people are like, wow, you know, that's, a, that's an odd and interesting choice. Here's the thing. It's a reference to the other Fantastic Four they did when they ever so briefly tried out a Fantastic Four that was Spider-Man, Hulk, Ghost Rider, Wolverine. Yeah. The, the new Fantastic Four, and I like that Doc Ock has basically asserted himself to be the Reed slash Peter of this team. Yeah, he, he would absolutely think of himself like that. Yeah, I'm <laughs> He'd think of himself as better than them. And I'm like, man, what a cool book. I know they're probably only making this because they need to really reestablish Doc Ock and Quick because of the new Spider-Man movie, but damn, if it gives us cool, interesting, outside-the-box books like this, I am so down. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely very interesting. I even like his, you know, suit trench coat design he's going with because, you know, it's very Alfred Molina. Yeah, oh, absolutely. It's definitely what he's going to wear in the film. And it's probably, and probably what he's going to be wearing in the comics for the next little bit. But, yo, yeah. I'm, a, I'm down for it. Yeah. I'm down for all of this. Th- that's really all I have to say on it. This looks cool. <laughs> it looks, <laughs> yeah. It. Uh, Marvel recently, with, like, their tie-ins for, like, these sorts of events have been really good. Like, the Darkhold stuff has been so fucking good. Yeah. They're really going out for Devil's Reign, too, probably because, hey, the book has been so damn good and we want to make Chip Zdarsky happy and also <laughs> because, hey... The last time we did a Daredevil event, Shadowland, it totally sucked, but this one might actually be really good. Yeah, yeah. So this is solid. I'm all about this. And uh, yeah, we got this. Uh, What is it? Frickin' Electra is going to be getting a little four-issue mini as well. Yep. So, I mean, there's lots of good stuff coming out from this. And uh, yeah, February can't come quick enough. Yeah. Punisher will get an appearance uh, when cops stop using his symbol to kill minorities. (laughs) Yeah, that's the sad truth, uh, Functorial. The Punisher the Punisher himself as a character did nothing wrong, but some very bad people are misusing his symbol, and because Marvel and Disney don't want to get off their asses and do anything about it, Frank is going to slumber until it's okay to bring him back. Yeah. 
which, you know, uh, here's the thing. Like, if you read that last Matthew Rosenberg series, they actually left him in the perfect place because Frank literally faked his death at the end of that story. Yeah, yeah. And that was before, like, any of all this sort of, like, picked up as well. Yeah, picked up a lot of steam there. So, yeah, I mean, honestly, that's the best thing for it. But here's the thing. If Garth Ennis came back tomorrow and said, I want to write a new Punisher story, they'd let him do it. <laughs> well, I mean, they, they did have all that stuff ready for uh, Barracuda and all that. And uh, yes, they, they had to right. table all of that because of all of this. <laughs> That's right. They had a whole new Barracuda Punisher story that is done. It's just not getting released. It's sitting on a shelf somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Which is funny because to think back then, it's like, ooh, they're bringing Barracuda here. Oh, that's an odd choice. You know, Barracuda, I mean, you know, we, we love him from Punisher Max, but, you know, is he, is he an unfortunate story type? I don't know. I guess we'll that, see. I, that's like, I'm really surprised the, uh, the Punisher Soviet story got, got published. That got finished up. Uh, only because it was Ennis. I assure yeah. you, if it was any other writer, they would not have done it, but it's yeah. Ennis's name attached to a Punisher, so they knew it would make money. Yeah, that's true. They knew it would make money regardless of it, but uh, don't worry. Frank will come back, just, you know, maybe not right now. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be a big deal when he does come back. It will. I, I keep telling you, call him, you know, just call the book Castle. He doesn't wear the skull anymore because he's like logos and, you know, branding is stupid. Yeah, yeah. I could see I, a, again to just do it. He he basically did that in the in the Rosenberg run. Yeah, pretty where much. He like did, where, he, where he like uh, disassociated himself from that symbol. Like he still wore it, but like he what it like meant for some people. Yeah, that's that's all you need. The book is Castle now. She, yeah, he gets brought in and forced to become an agent of Shield. So it's now Frank Castle, agent of Shield. Yeah, there's lots of ways around it if you wanted to. But again, Marvel in the back of their minds is like, oh, well, we hate how the image is being misrepresented, but God, we love the money we make <laughs> off that image when we sell it. Shit, we're really at a rock and a hard place here, guys, aren't we? Make him Frankencastle again. Make him an angel again. Oh, no. No, please don't. <laughs> no, don't. Yeah, th that's what they need. They need to come out of, with a book that's just called Frank Castle Identity Crisis, and it's literally just him super meta walking around his apartment being like, I don't know what I am anymore. <laughs> it's just all set in his apartment. He doesn't step outside of it. Yep, it's just him in his shitty apartment. Or in the backseat of the battle van. <laughs> <laughs> They do that until they eventually take our idea and write uh, Punisher Pride and Punishment, where we send him to San Francisco and he becomes the champion of the gay community. Yes, yes. That'll that'll get all them people to stop wearing the skull right quick. Yes, yes. And this, yeah, again, like what we said, the symbol is like uh, the LGBTQ flag yes like the colors it's him. like the skull but like the colors yeah <laughs> yeah it's like frank is like i now defend a community that needs me more than anyone else you know thank you i, I now know the meaning of pride and punishment <laughs> <laughs> again add that to the list of stories they'll never let us write <laughs> but i totally would <laughs> uh moving on from there we got some iron fist news actually alessa wong is going to be giving us a brand new iron fist miniseries it's been a long time since we've had an iron fist book and this will give us a new iron fist yeah they're getting rid of danny Rand because he's done nothing like the past couple of years pretty much not for lack of trying they gave him multiple series and multiple pushes and hey, that that tv show did a number on him <laughs> It really did. Like, again, to, to borrow a wrestling term here when it comes to, like, getting characters over, that show got Danny under is what it did. It did the opposite of getting him <laughs> over. It actively made people hate the comic <laughs> character who did nothing wrong. <laughs> the, uh, the big idea for this is that, while they have not confirmed it, almost certainly this new Iron Fist is going to be an Asian guy. Yeah, probably Swordsman. Pro yeah, probably Swordsman, because Les Wong's worked with the character before, and a lot of people have just thought that it was a bit of a no-brainer. Honestly, this also feels like something that, you know, the Marvel editors were looking at Twitter one day, and a lot of people were complaining about the Iron Fist show and said, man, you know, if they just made him even half Asian, they would have been able to sidestep a lot of cultural appropriation problems. <laughs> and someone in editorial is like, what if we just make an Asian Iron Fist? What do you mean we haven't done that before? Seriously, in all the years of this character, we never did that? <laughs> How? How have they never done that? How have we never done that? Obviously not counting, like, frickin' Avengers BC and all yeah. the other... Yeah, the Iron ones Fist that come kids. before Danny Rand, yeah. But modern-day yeah. Danny 
And uh, uh, some people were quick to say, like, hey, wasn't there also another Power Man? Yeah, Victor Cruz, the second Power Man. Hey, they should team up. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, they should. <laughs> the new heroes for hire. The new heroes for hire. And then Danny and Luke should come in and be like, hey, you're doing our thing. <laughs> Uh, Danny gave the power of the dragon away in Heart of the Dragon. Oh, did he? Is that actually how Heart of the Dragon ended? Seriously. I okay. did not read that. I know he had a series. Okay, so they're not just dropping it on us then. There's actually, like, a story reason. Okay, cool. Because I saw, I saw the artwork of him. You know, they were doing the famous Spider-Man No More thing, but it was Iron Fist No More, and it was Danny putting the stuff in the garbage and walking away. Yeah. So there you go. I'm interested in this. I hope this is cool. I hope this strikes a chord there, because I just like reading about Iron Fist, and I like the universe. It might also <laughs> mean we might actually get to see more of him in, like, like the MCU, like like yeah. this version, like a newer version. Shang-Chi really did. opened up the door to all that sort of stuff. It sure did. They're like, whoa, people like Wushu Kung Fu stuff? Wait, how many Wushu Kung Fu heroes do we have? Oh my god, we need to get in on this. <laughs> so that's good uh in fact hey you know do you want to talk about that matt do you want to talk about some movies we've seen let's talk about some movies let's talk about some movies we've seen uh, where would you like to start would you like to start with the eternals or shang chi because we have now officially seen both and we can officially talk about it let's talk about shang chi because that just came out on streaming and like yeah. it was the first one before eternals should be fresher in everyone's mind uh i had a blast with this one this one was a lot of fun and to my wonderful surprise there was some twists and turns that people didn't spoil for me when i oh, saw really? this so i was oh yeah 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 that's cool i that's was good i was pleasantly surprised by this because uh i, I probably should have seen it coming because one of the things they did to prep for shang chi is they put uh that uh hail to the king trevor slattery <laughs> mandarin short on the app and i'm like oh cool this is fun why did they do that because trevor slattery is actually a pretty big character in the shang chi movie yeah that is that's got to be the longest like wait in between stories, right? Yeah, yeah, it, it is. I when did that 2013. Yeah, that's like six, seven years. Jesus Christ, and Kingsley is is still a joy. Yeah, he, he's fantastic as that character. He's he's so great too because you know he brings a lot of comedy muscle to a hero. You know, Chang. She he's he's a little bit more like serious. Like obviously the movie's funny and there's jokes, but he himself isn't nearly as quippy no no yeah he is very serious uh or a bit more serious than uh than most of them which makes sense given his upbringing which i actually really like how they tell his origin and kind of space it out throughout the movie via flashbacks mm -hmm. yeah it's really well done yeah uh obviously the guy playing the mandarin is out of this fucking world oh, he's great tony long if, if you love him you got to check out his like other films he, he's like a huge huge like action movie star in china yeah, he carries himself like he is a megastar. Yeah, oh, he, he's so movie. good in so many. He's he does so many good movies over there. Fucking like Hard Boiled and The Killer, stuff oh, like yes, that. Yes, yeah, yes. Hard Hard Boiled I have seen obviously. Yeah, but uh, yeah, he he is so good in this. He carries himself with such a swagger and ends up ultimately being a much more complicated villain than we've seen mm -hmm. in a lot of these Marvel movies because he is motivated solely by the love of his wife. Yeah, yeah. And we see them falling in love, and we see that, you know, he actually gave up the Ten Rings and this villainous lifestyle to be with her and have these two kids. And it's like, wow, you don't see that a lot. Yeah, I like how they explained it in the movie where, like, he, he'd lived by that time for, like, thousands of years and, like, mm -hmm. nothing, uh, like, challenged him mm -hmm. uh, all that much until uh, this woman came along and actually, like, ended up beating him at his own game. And, yeah. And, 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 and instead of, and instead of, like... I could see like an easy, a villain like getting really angry at that and like trying to kill yeah. her. He instead like respects her. Absolutely. Uh, the beginning scene with them, you know, fighting in the very like Shaw brothers, you know, clearing yeah. in the force. I'm like, God damn, this looks like nothing else in any of the Marvel. The, the, they, the wire they, work and everything is so good. Yeah, they made a real Shaw brothers wire work wushu kung fu movie in my superhero movie. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. There's there's a legitness to it that really souls it and that like you know strength continues through the rest of the movie obviously this is uh simu lu's big uh what is it debut as an actor coming from canadian television <laughs> which mm -hmm. is very interesting to me uh boy boy i'm glad i uh went back and searched there it's like hey those shitty comments he made on reddit what was the deal with that okay some of them were pretty bad but actually a lot of them were taken out of context too okay just yeah. have to check that out yeah whatever <laughs> 
Yeah, I just have to check that out to make certain before I start saying too many nice things about it. Man, do you think the worst thing I thought I was going to say about this is, boy, uh, I liked Aquafina more than I thought I would. Jeez, I think I I'm starting to like Aquafina. She was actually, like, bearable in this film. Like, yeah, this is the first time I've seen her, and I'm like, wow, she's actually, like, really funny and, like, saying really funny mm. stuff and, like, yeah. uh, a really great chemistry with Simu. Very. And yet they don't make it romantic, which no. I really appreciate. Yeah. That it's like, yeah, you can have a movie with two people who are just friends. Yeah, I, I like that they remain friends at the end. Yeah, because like if they had a romance, it would just it would detract from like the Mandarin mother romance. <laughs> and I'm like, no, yeah, that's that's your romantic core to this. You don't need to repeat it here. No. Uh, the way they reimagine the rings is pretty cool too. I uh, people are really upset with the, how they're not rings, really? but 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 they need to realize that they're not rings for humans they're rings yeah. for a fucking dragon called fing fang foom so yeah. of course they'll be big because they fit on dragon fingers mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you know also i fucking too. love like how they portrayed in the film also we just got done the thanos saga and the glove and mm -hmm. they're basically rings anyway so you got to do something more visually interesting yeah and this was very visually interesting i like that oh yeah you could use them as like whips and like uh mm -hmm. shang uses them at the end as like stepping stones and stuff like that he can they can do kamehameha's yeah. with them yeah which man okay d did you catch this because uh in shang's room we see he's got a bunch of posters there he has the warriors one of mm -hmm. my favorite movies and he also has Kung Fu Hustle yep. in that as well. And literally the way he defeats, like, the big evil monster thing at the end of this is he does the Palm of God technique where he flies <laughs> up in the air and does the thing. I'm like, oh, my God, he's doing the Palm of God technique. Holy shit. <laughs> I lost my fucking – I was inconsolable when I saw that. And I'm like, of course he did it because he saw the movie. He owns the poster, so he knew how to do the move. <laughs> yeah, he, he was he, – he watched all that anime. He knows all, the, like, the moves and the Kamehameha's and everything. <laughs> He has the power of God in anime on his side. <laughs> they, they even say Kamehameha in this, and I'm like, okay, look, they know what they're doing now. <laughs> they know they just made a big anime, and I'm so happy they made the big anime. <laughs> also, more restraint, too. They don't explain what the rings are in the movie by the end. That's the post credit where they hang out with Wong. And it's like, yeah, the rings seem to call out to the universe somewhere. We don't know what that means. Like well, again, yeah, I think you had to explain like a, a like other stuff. Like they had all the mm. stuff with the Mandarin. They had to explain because yeah. still to this day, people don't seem to understand that Trevor Slattery was never the real Mandarin. <laughs> He was a fake. He was an like they had that tiger. whole they had that whole dinner scene where like uh, he lays where, it down. When Ru lays it down, it's like yeah, a, a bunch of Americans appropriated my name and like fucked it over. So yeah, of course I've got to come back and fuck them all up. I I love that dinner scene too because that is just awkward immigrant parent <laughs> dinner, just you know perfectly. <laughs> like yes, we're fighting, but also sit down and have some food. <laughs> <laughs> is what we got to do and the food also looked delicious <laughs> but yeah there's just there's just so much really to like about the movie great cameos wong is in it a bunch and we get uh the abomination who will no doubt be in the she hulk show too they've yeah. said who, who is like seemingly training with wong like wong yeah they're buddies wong's, yeah wong's like his partner and they were like like i i i, th I swear they were rigging that fight because they knew each other it's like you, you hit me yeah. too hard that time and everything yeah it's a wrestling match it's for the fans <laughs> there was also, also in in that fight as well in uh in those cells they were passing there was an extremist soldier fighting a black yes. widow yes there absolutely was i'm glad you said that because to me that, that that's like such a great bit of foreshadowing it's like oh yeah hey we're extremists yeah remember that yeah remember iron man 3 oh and then you see trevor there and it comes all full circle again yeah i just love knowing those things exist in the world yeah cowboy marvel took a page from naruto the nine detail yeah basically yeah there were nine-tailed foxes and those things that are like the gate guardians and chinese lore and like weird butt rabbits with wings and everything <laughs> oh morris was so good how cute is that this is like you see a character show up and it's like that's the plush that's the plushie that every kid is gonna want now and, and it's so weird because it doesn't doesn't have a face like nope. that like that that recognizable thing it's just like a ball of fur with wings yep it's almost perfect. 
I, I liked it that much. But yeah, Shang, Shang-Chi, or sorry, Shang-Chi. See, I've been saying it wrong, and I like that's even a joke in the movie that people say his name wrong all his the name time. Is, his name is Sean, yeah. yeah his, his name is Sean, yep, nothing else, just Sean. <laughs> And again, that's a joke too. Really, that's the name you took that's so close to your real name? Seriously? <laughs> you were hiding, and that was the name you took. <laughs> uh, his sister's pretty great too, because his sister also got like a really big push in the Gene Lu and Yang comics yes. uh, before all this started. Obviously, she's way different in the comic. Yeah, well, uh, well in the comic, it, you can't you say that, but then like by the post credit scene, she basically becomes like how she, she is becomes- in the comics. She's she's not eight feet tall with a shaved head and fights uh, with no, a bow staff. No. no, but she does so, end up leading the Ten Rings, which in the comics she, she ends up leading uh, what his actual father in the comics, which was, um, what's his name? Uh, it's, uh, I can't remember what his name is. Shang-Chi's uh, father. Xian. Oh. Uh, in the comics. Well, he, oh, uh, Xian Chu. Yeah, that's it get it because he's got a chew there because fu man yes, chew and because everything else yeah. again god that Lu and yang shang chi book was so goddamn good in the way that like Lu and yang pulled it all together to have it make sense and <laughs> yeah. also connect with the movie yeah and, and also connect to like all all of like the past marvel stuff like like fu man chew and all that sort of stuff and like deal with that sort of stuff yeah to like w- yeah hey guess what we got an actual chinese person to wade through all the racism and have it make sense and actually like recontextualize it which yeah. is a lot of what this movie does too as well where it's like look you can have your cake and eat it too you can have a character called the mandarin you just need to have an amazing actor and also call it out and also make it part of the plot yeah make like the actual mandarin part of uh the character like that was like the false part yes like they, the, the, they st- the the americanized part version of it yeah they stole my life's work and named me after an orange yeah <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like yeah i guess there really is nothing scary about a mandarin orange <laughs> they're delicious though they're the cadillac of orange <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's pretty cool. Again, we get a we get a quick Hulk and Captain Marvel uh, cameo at the end. That they literally phone in their cameo. Captain Marvel was kind of an obvious one because uh, Brie Larson has been in every film uh, Daniel Destin Cretton has made. Oh really? Yeah. So of course she would be in this. Huh. I did not know that. They're That's like best friends. Cool. Oh wow, I like that. Yeah. Maybe if they, maybe they do another one, she'll come hang out in the movie more. Maybe she'll be a big cameo. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if they're th- because obviously we seem to know now that the next movie is gonna have to deal with space shit because they just say yeah the rings are from space because yeah. all magic is technically from space e- either we're gonna deal with that or that's gonna be something the avengers deal with like the avengers right. fighting fing fang foom yeah which th- they might have to change the name or at least make a joke about that it's like fing fang foom huh you know that sounds very close to something very offensive <laughs> Maybe the dragon will talk like he does in the comics. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. Maybe he can make a joke about, like, you know, my real alien name is incomprehensible to the human tongue. That's as close as they or, got. Or it sounds like Fing Fang Foom when he says it or something. Yeah, when he says it out. There's many jokes you could go with it. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of ways they could go with that one. Uh, Feng Chuo saying, I love how both the Mandarin's children inherit the Ten Rings. Yeah, they kind of do. <laughs> one gets the item, one gets the organization. Huh yeah and i i also like that shang he doesn't seem to want to use the rings either like he just has them like he's not he used them in that fight but you don't see them on his arms or anything again that's good sequel building too because it's like okay you have this amazing power now which assumedly means you won't age and you'll have all this other how is that gonna mess with you Mm -hmm. do you even want them do you want to get rid of them do you know our more jerk ass is gonna come and try and take them from you yeah i have to imagine yeah someone someone's gonna try and take him from him is it like the number one headband in afro samurai where as soon as you have it <laughs> also speaking of side characters there we got an actually pretty cool version of razor fist which i never thought yeah he, he is ac- an actual character it's an actual character that actually has a little back and forth and pathos and also the arm is not stupid because he doesn't have it on both arms he just has it on one and he can swap it out for other stuff yeah it kind of makes sense there's only just one yeah I like that. It's also kind of like a freaking heated lightsaber too. Sometimes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a good. I never thought I would say I would like that. And he's, he's got a car. He's got a BM. He's got a BMW uh, yes. hi- hybrid, hybrid or electric powered car that has his name yes. graffitied on the side of it. 
fucking stellar, excellent joke, 10 on 10. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got freaking Deathstalker, who I believe is only in two actual issues of Marvel Comics, but because he's visually interesting enough, he gets to be a minor heavy in yeah, this. Yeah, he, he te- he's technically in... Uh... Uh, Gene Lang, uh, Gene Lu and oh, Yang's right. book, but like they're like uh, putty patrol people. Ah, and there's like a bunch of clones of him and stuff that Shang Chi can just beat up. And I'm sure that was a movie connection too, where it's like, hey, this is coming out. You got to put one in yeah. there. And again, yeah, visually, uh, like good looking character. Very much so, and a great way to up the ante for Act Three when it's like, oh no, they killed the cool guy who hasn't said anything yet. <laughs> yeah, before he did anything. <laughs> Now, now we know we're fucked. <laughs> uh, you think, uh, uh, what is it, Mandarin's going to stay dead, or do you think we're going to see him back in future movies? Do you think he's just too good? That depends on Tony Leung. That depends I guess on it him. does. Like, it, it, how much is he going to ask to come back? Like, True. If, if they want him to come back, that is. That's true. I mean, I could definitely see him be good uh, flashback fodder. Yes, yeah flashback fodder maybe maybe he leaves a mystery for his son like oh now you will need to unravel the mystery of the ten rings as i once did yeah like maybe he knows about them like where they came from and everything yeah I, i've left a scavenger hunt for you to find my son Ooh, i'm here as a force ghost or like on a videotape or something i was gonna say you could probably do something with like uh like explore like the chinese afterlife and stuff yeah, like that oh, with him. that would be really cool yeah well i'd like that a lot but yeah, yeah. shang chi really cool really damn good liked it a lot i can see why you know this is going to be the start of a big new franchise for them Mm -hmm. absolutely uh i guess the next one is eternals and boy real night and day on these ones like (laughs) shang like shang chi is like really cool but very much sticking to the marvel formula that has made them so famous now and made them so much money you know hero's journey some jokes some action you know a big fight scene at the end Eternals, in many ways, is the anti-Marvel movie, and that is everything you think you know and everything you assume they do, they don't do in this. No, and it's it's funny when when I when I first saw the film, I'm like, this is exactly how I imagined an Eternals film would be. Yeah, pretty much. As some as one of the three people who read Eternals, who actually reads <laughs> Eternals, that's the thing. So many people went in like, oh, this is gonna be like Guardians of the Galaxy, right? This is gonna be yeah. like no eternals has always been this from jack yeah. kirby to even how they're doing it now this is this is just kind of how they are and this is also maybe why they don't always have a book but are always characters other heroes need to see and talk and, to and get involved and with. it's why i was not surprised that people didn't like it because i'm like yeah. yeah this is eternals this is exactly how they are in the comics not a lot of people read those comics yeah, I mean, this is definitely a movie where it's le- where I left, and I'm like, I enjoyed that. I fault no one for not liking this, mm-hmm. though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Th- 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 this is, n- yeah, again, this is the opposite of everything Marvel movies have basically taught you to accept. And, like, it's so funny because the first five minutes, they're like, okay, here's your big action scene right here. We're fighting the Deviants. We're doing the things we're known for. Here's a cool needle, needle drop song. We use Pink Floyd's Time, which I thought was an excellent fucking choice. Yes. And then the movie just kind of slows down after that, yeah. and it's a bit of a it, mood piece road movie. It's exactly like the Eternals comics. The, the, the comics have barely got any action in it. When they do have, they do have action in it, but it's it's – very small parts interspersed between like long parts of like characters talking and like Mm -hmm, talking mm -hmm. about like life and death and all that sort of stuff you know what it is and it's why i probably liked it as much as i did the bulk of this movie is the stuff i like from highlander and when people think highlander they just think there could be only one yeah. sword fights no 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 no, no, no. so the world most, building and all that sort of stuff exactly most of highlander is a bunch of immortals sitting around who wants to live forever who wants to love forever they're filled with ennui they don't know their place in the world mm-hmm. you know how do you keep moving on and changing you know and your only friends are other you know immortals and everything that's the big feeling i got on this yeah and again, not for everyone. I liked what it was doing, though. Stylistically, obviously, you know, much was made of, you know, Chloe Zhao filming a lot of this with, like, regular lighting and, like, all this other stuff that it she did. It looks brilliant. It looked fantastic. Yeah. 
it it looks like an art movie. Yeah. It looks like an art movie because that's what they're going for. It's like, hey, <laughs> you put art movie in my superhero movie. And really, like, that's kind of the only way you could do Eternals. Yep. Like, because that's, that's what all their books are like. All Pretty their much. books aren't like your usual super heroic stuff. Like it's all yeah. it's all like like be- like like in Kieran Gillen's run, uh, it's art Rubik's art. It's all like like grand scale like mm-hmm. temples and all, all these landscapes and everything. It's like and that's exactly what this film was. Also, too, I can't help but think about like man, we also almost got a New Gods movie too. Yo, if they had made it like the comics, New Gods would have been like this too. Exactly. Yeah. Because, like, when people think of new gods and, like, Kirby stuff, it's like, oh, it's big, you know, uh, like, Star Wars battles out in space. Not really. No. It's mostly just gods talking to each other. <laughs> yeah. They got problems, man. They got so many problems. Uh, I-, I wasn't really expecting Cersei to be the main character, and she is so the main character. Yeah, yeah. yeah she she kind of is, I, I guess, in, like, the Kieran Gillen run, not, but, like, only recent like she's only recently because they only just got got to her so she's kind of like the main character now um but yeah uh her being the main character in this was really quite strange yeah it's a bit of a surprise because they do a thing because like obviously if you know anything about the eternals it's like ah one one betrays them one is a betrayer it's usually droog because in the comics he's also a deviant and Mm -hmm. kind of a weird monster face where here he's not here though they completely blindside you and holy shit icarus is actually uh the bad guy i he's not a bad guy is it because he's doing exactly what he does in the comics which is he's like the most the the most loyal to the celestials he'll do anything to make sure their uh vision is seen through and everything and that would include also attacking his own eternals bad guy's not the right antagonist he becomes yeah. a minor he, antagonist that's why i was i was really upset with people saying oh he's just evil superman i'm like he's not evil he's not doing anything out of malice or or violence he's or anything doing what he was born to do yeah exactly he's doing what he was born to do and it's so funny too i loved all the people on twitter being like oh yeah you know chloe Zhao took you know inspiration from Zack snyder superman for this oh how cool is it i'm like oh you haven't seen the movie yet have yeah, you yeah. you haven't read the comics have you <laughs> yeah you you haven't seen it and i will admit yeah i also didn't think icarus would be scottish holy shit he's scottish <laughs> yeah well he's a richard man and i don't think he would be able to actually do a, an american voice no, I, I really thought, you know, you know, when he started sounding like my own grandparents, I'm like, holy shit, what? <laughs> oh, I'm Icarus, how you doing? <laughs> ah, let's drink Guinness and fight, which is what he does. Yes. <laughs> amongst other things. But yeah, see, I actually think that, you know, Icarus has a great arc in this movie as it relates to Cersei and everyone else. Because, you know, Ajax, uh, Salma Hayek, you know, lets, lets them all go after they have a falling out. And she's like, you know, I want you to walk the earth like highlanders yep. and i want you to you know find something to love and something to tether you here because you know our mission isn't really doing it for us anymore and you know everyone does it except for icarus he yeah. finds nothing he, he, finds he just nothing like to wanders love the earth and just yeah doesn't find anything to love about the humans except for cersei he is all hung up on cersei <laughs> and it's only in his final minutes does it like finally hit him where it's like oh i loved her so much but she loved earth and she is so much more you know uh what is it of a complete person than i am i've done wrong here hurting my friends and my family you know i i need to try and help them now it was exactly like how jason aaron ended his him where in at the start of his uh avengers run when he killed off the eternals where icarus after learning what the celestials actually planned to do went insane Mm -hmm. and killed himself yeah pretty much yeah so i mean it, it all definitely tracks with the comics yeah yeah, I, I need to find something to love on Earth here. Now, again, I won't say Eternals is perfect because they have a no. lot of characters and a lot of stuff that they got to try and juggle. Sprite, I feel, kind of got done dirty at the end because she quickly betrays and then is quickly forgiven. <laughs> she, that's basically what happens in the comics. She's a very complicated character in the comics. Very. Where it's like, oh, she she's stuck as a little girl because that that's her punishment for committing genocide against the Eternals. So that's her punishment. But in here, it's not. She was just like made like that from the it's, get go. It's a cruel joke because yeah. you know uh, Ashram is God, the Celestials <laughs> are gods, and you know they're sometimes cruel and fucked up in what they do. Yeah, yeah. 
which again is an interesting idea definitely and again you know i i think they hit you with you know sprites trouble right early on where because you know she she's a master illusionist so she can hang out in the bar and everything but the second someone touches her the illusion breaks down yeah yeah so you know i am forced to forever look and never touch and when you're immortal and you have these problems forever that's really gotta mess with you Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's right and like i buy that and it makes sense and hey the the same you know uh little samurai sword that she stabbed cersei in the back with is the same one she's looking at at her apartment i'm like oh see so they did kind of you know uh what is I it, you know, it back. Roads. i i thought yeah. it was going to be like that knife that she gave her at the uh that cersei made at the beginning of the oh, film yeah. you know she gave it to that, yeah, yeah. that kid yeah 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 so so like they definitely you know uh said that it was the thing that was going uh kumel najani is great as kingo yep He's great. He's everything I wanted from the role. I'm like, yep, you got swole for this, my dude. Good on you. <laughs> Every time he's on the movie, I smile because I know that, like us, he started as just a fan and just a regular podcaster, and now he gets to be in the thing. Yeah, yeah. He 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 got that Marvel body. Got that Marvel. He got a Bollywood dance number, which is fucking cool. <laughs> yeah. And his power is the best because he has the power of finger bangs. He's got finger guns, yeah. <laughs> he's got finger guns. Love everything about that guy. Uh, even if his own like character journey is a little weird because he's like well i love my family and i love icarus so i'm not gonna get involved i'm gonna be like a conscientious objector Mm -hmm. to the world getting destroyed and i'm like huh yeah how does that work (laughs) i mean i guess there's one in every family is what they're trying (laughs) to say because they are like a weird dysfunctional family Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the eternals uh faustus or festa again i can never pronounce them Faustus, Fest, Faust, Haas, Fastus. Uh, Fastus gets a really interesting arc, you know, as like the inventor and the technological guy of the team who has, you know, kind of been pushing mankind in directions and it all goes horribly wrong with the A bomb. And I'm like, holy shit, that's really cool. Yeah. Again, again, a lot of people seem to think that he was the one who created the A bomb. That's no, not no. the fact at all. It's he's the one who pushed humanity uh to develop that technology because that's that's like his his role in the film he's the one who like develops the technology like the plow and like the steam Mm -hmm. engine and stuff like that again he he shepherded Mm -hmm. uh what is it human scientific development but because we humans are shitty obviously we took all these gifts of science and turned it to like the most devastating weapon yeah and that's the that's the incident that uh makes him decide you know fuck them all i'm just gonna go fucking live probably as a hermit for a while until he finds his like husband yeah yeah falls in love gets good that's a great moment and also hey uh, i talked about how shitty my theater experience was but i will actually give solid credit to the theater i saw this movie with they uh were slightly weirded out by marvel's first sex scene earlier on in the movie <laughs> but they were thankfully not weirded out by the gay kiss i'm like okay cool audience all right you're fine <laughs> <laughs> i actually really i really like that relationship he had in that film because it, it felt um organic like in a lot of yes. a lot of these films that that sort of stuff like you, you see all the articles like oh the first gay kiss in star wars mm. and stuff mm. and it's always like uh, in rise of skywalker they had one but it was a, it was a scene that was like obviously shot by like the second unit and it was done in a way that in uh international they markets could cut, you it, could out cut it out or like, or like cgi it over and everything whereas here yeah. they couldn't do that here it's an actual part of the film and ties yeah. into the bigger theme of found family <laughs> and also finding something to love on earth that tethers you there and yeah that's that's good stuff that all works that's pretty solid uh the actor playing droog is great too just yeah. such a wonderful little shit barry keoghan he's he's uh irish yeah ha- and wonderfully creepy too yeah oh he's great he's fantastic he he always plays like creepy roles like that he's got that dr no haircut yeah yep going on there uh, his is interesting too and totally highlander i have the power to make people do whatever i want i could end all trouble on earth if i wanted but if i did then i'd be an asshole yeah that, that takes away free will i take away free will from everyone is that okay again some really interesting heady ideas and concepts they play with in this movie i don't yeah. know if they all get the screen time because again they're introducing so much backstory and lore here yeah they were introducing double the characters that were in guardians of the galaxy but then guardians yep. of the galaxy doesn't have like that added lore of like the celestials who made mm. the eternals and the deviants and all this other stuff 
this is also one of those things where it's like, even if you don't like this now, this is going to be important for the next several movies, I bet. Oh, it's got to be fucking important. Half the fucking Earth is now an Eternal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's, what's that going to be? Avengers Mountain. Avengers Mountain. Aven- Ooh, that's pretty good, actually. I like that. When we finally get the new team together. Yes, yes. That, that's probably going to have some Eternals on it. Yeah, because that's interesting, too, because it's like, obviously, you know, in the last run of Marvel movies, it was all about the stones and the Thanos and everything they're trying to build up. Here, it's interesting because it doesn't seem like they're building to one big thing. You know, obviously, uh, Shang-Chi wants to try and get to space to learn more about his rings. There's missing Eternals and, you know, maybe the Celestials are going to come back for the final host and be the big bad guys. Because obviously that's an Avengers level threat mm-hmm. when the Celestials come back. Absolutely. Well, again, we saw it like at the um, the end of the film, like uh, uh, Arishem just like appears above Earth and like everyone on Earth saw him. So like, yep. so it's like, how does, how do the Avengers, especially the Avengers as they currently are now, yeah. how do they deal with that? Cause the Avengers currently, currently now are like kind of lacking. The only real like Avenger is like Captain America and that's yeah. Sam Wilson at the moment. So like, yeah. what is he going to do against that? <laughs> He, he is a regular human in a pretty good suit. Yeah. Well, like, even then, like, what is Shang-Chi going to do against that? What's, what's Hawkeye going to do against that? Shoot an arrow at it. <laughs> That's another thing, too. The TV shows actually seem to have, like, more of, like, an end game tying it all together with, you know, Elaine going around and recruiting people for a group that is probably going to be the Thunderbolts. Yeah, Thunderbolts or Dark Avengers. Yeah. Oh, and Kang the Conqueror is out there too. Holy shit! And yeah. All of his very many variants. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so it actually seems like we have many storylines all going on at once. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I wonder what the end game for this is going to be, or if they're like, you know, we're going to pick and choose what the end games are for these now. Well, I I would imagine like uh, as you said, like a final host, like Celestials coming back to Earth to maybe destroy mm-hmm. it. that. That's an Avengers level threat. Yeah, that's got to be an Avengers movie, right? But there. then that also so. Movie like kang has to be as well or like maybe maybe like a fantastic four level threat Mm, yeah 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 maybe what they're trying to do now is like hey because we have all these different stratas in marvel now like hey eternals and celestials this is going to be the avengers level threat uh everything we're doing down here with like the thunderbolts and everything that's going to be the tv show threat Mm -hmm. and then you know we'll have like a magical threat for blade and moon knight and everyone to deal with yeah yeah yeah, and maybe we'll bring back the Kingpin at some point, too, and, you know, Spider-Man and them can knock him around a little bit. Yeah. Well, actually, I guess he's doing multiversal shit, too, because both him and yeah. Doctor Strange are doing multiverse stuff yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. And Wanda's out of the picture because she's probably yeah. going to be the villain of Multiverse of Madness. Yeah, that seems to be the way they're going with that. Yeah, who else is even it's... left? There's, a, I guess, like, uh, War Machine, but, like, he's yeah. got Armor Wars and stuff coming up. He's getting a TV show, but hey, he'll get to pick up Ironheart probably off the back of that, so we got a new young hero. Yep. Uh, Samuel L. Jackson is going to be fighting aliens in Secret Invasion. Yep. <laughs> so that'll be something. <laughs> Again, he was never really a super... Uh, we got both the Ant people. Yes, yeah, yep, Ant-Man and Wasp. And- and they're going to be fighting Kang, which is interesting because, again, you think Kang would be a bigger thing. Yeah, well, yeah, again, I'm intrigued to see how that film actually works out. Like, how, how does that yeah, even yeah. work? They're yeah. fighting Kang. What the fuck? Uh, we got Thor. We're probably going to get two Thors because, you know, we got, uh, mm-hmm. what is it, Jane Foster and that, most of the Guardians still. Yep. Most of the Guardians still going on. Star Fox, who uh, I guess that was Harry Styles as Star Fox. Yeah, everyone made a big fuss about that. Yeah, all, all, all the girls in my theater seemed really interested in that. I'm like, am I, am I supposed to know him? I do find it funny that they cast, like, a really attractive guy as Thanos' brother, because obviously Thanos yeah. is like, got the deviant gene, so he's, like, an ugly, yeah. like, nutsack face. <laughs> For real. Yeah. That was also <laughs> um, Patton Oswalt as Pip the Troll. Oh, was that really? Holy yeah. shit. Yeah, I didn't That's like the, uh, the CGI on Pip. It looked weird. It looked like mm. it wasn't finished it it looked a little disney afternoon movie didn't it yeah it's like ah it's at the end we'll just you know we'll just throw it in now it's all good we'll fix it for the dvd release (laughs) yeah Ooh, and i guess we got uh as you talked about everyone who's still around we got captain marvel and spectrum and probably miss marvel coming too Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it'll be it'll be an interesting lineup and like you said we'll probably take the eternals that you know tested best with audience so kumail definitely because how could he not test great yeah i imagine icarus will be back 
Icarus will be back. Uh, again, that's another thing. I feel like a lot of people, it's like, yeah, he flew to the sun like Icarus did and burned up. Yeah, and and it, I, I don't think people also realize that, like, uh, Eternals can't die. I mean, it's in no. their name. They're, they're Eternal. They're, they're, they're reborn as, like, literal copies of themselves. Yeah, which even more so now in this universe because it's less of a biological process and more of a robot thing they use like the robots now maybe again it's like the comics in kieran gillen's run when they're like reborn they're like reborn from the machine which is earth itself yeah yeah. so so it's like they technically wrote they're robots in that they have programming but i think yeah they're they're like a a a humanish body right this this also further leads to a question too they're like oh there's other eternals you know colonizing other planets to become Mm -hmm. giant celestials too are they different Eternals with different mythological names, or are they the same ones but on different planets? That'll be interesting. Because that's how you get Icarus back, to be like, no, I'm just another Icarus from another planet. Mm-hmm. Also, where do we think they went? Because that's the mystery. Like, oh, the other Eternals went somewhere. Well, they probably went to, quote-unquote, Olympia, which is that mm. like, like space station thing that you saw in the film. Right. I heard some interesting theories. Maybe they're in the Cancerverse. Ooh, interesting. Maybe they got pulled into the Cancerverse. Maybe they were eaten by Galactus and they exist in his stomach. (laughs) And I'm like, those are actually fairly cool ideas that you could explore. (laughs) Uh, Kali helping us out again. I get they want to replace Danny, but I really like Danny and Luke's friendship and would hate uh, MCU 2 to skip it also shout out to dexter's great return oh i mean the thing about comics is that it's always circular so you're gonna get another heroes for hire with you know luke and danny they'll always come back at some point absolutely yeah they're never not they're never just gonna go away forever the status quo is always returned to oh cosmic rejects with a good one there bionoids biological androids i like that a lot actually (laughs) the bionoids (laughs) That sounds like an 80s toy line, the Bionoids. Yeah, and they'd, they'd be like made of cheap, cheap plastic and, and shatter yeah. the minute you touch them. Tell me about it. Oh, I guess we also need to talk about Black Knight. Judging by all the uh, promotion they did for this movie, it really seemed like he was going to be in it more than he was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I I didn't I uh, we didn't really talk about it, but I didn't particularly like uh, Cersei's relationship with both Icarus and mm. uh, and uh, Kit Harrington's Black Knight Dane Whitman like it like there was no chemistry there there was more chemistry between Drug and uh, Bakari there really was wasn't there <laughs> like it, the, and it was weird because we picked up on Cersei's story she's she's like been with Dane for like a while he kind of sort yeah, of yeah. knows their Eternals but like kind of kind of like puts it out to like as ah, sprite just making shit up that that did need a little bit more time where it's like okay so this lady has been a warrior queen she's been all over the world why does she like kid harrington so much yeah what attracted her to him specifically and i kept waiting for the reveal where i'm like oh well the eternals are immortal so surely they have met other black knights throughout history and maybe dane is like a reincarnation of a black knight that cersei had like an affair with back in the medieval era and i'm like nope nope he's he's just a guy. okay well they can't they they allude they throughout the movie they allude to his uh heritage because she gets in that ring that was from his family and he he, he uh dates it to like the middle ages and obviously cersei had that ring or like yeah, she, she she bought it i know she she said she bought it but it could also be alluded to that she maybe like owned it Knew all that time others. yeah because she makes a point of like hey reconcile with your uncle and then later when they're in the eternals treasure vault there it's like oh is that uh the ebony blade nah just excalibur just excalibur just Excalibur, you know. So clearly the Eternals knew, and I kept waiting for that shoe to drop, and maybe in other versions of the scripts it did. It didn't bother me. That's like, oh, this movie didn't have enough Black Knight in it, because it's fucking Black Knight. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's fucking nothing. I mean, this is, like, this is, we always say this, you know, this next Marvel movie or project was a backdoor pilot for so-and-so. Never was it more apparent in this one where it's like, yeah, it's a backdoor pilot for Black Knight. We'll put him in somewhere. Yeah. And, and, you know, he had that post credit scene where yeah, he, he gets this scene. scene. And that voice that talks to him, that's Blade. That was confirmed Ooh. to be Mahashala Ali's Blade. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I'm kind of so disappointed again, the voice wasn't British, though. Same. 
because he's supposed to be Blade. I think people forget that. Yeah. <laughs> Which again is you know the idea that we are heading into a more mystically magically thing. Was was uh, Black Knight ever on the Midnight Suns? Don't know. I know he was on the Avengers for a hot minute. Mm. He would definitely be an interesting addition if they ever do Midnight Suns again. Because obviously, you do Moon Knight, you do Blade. That's what you work up to. You do a Midnight Suns movie. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, yeah, we're the paranormal Avengers. Yeah, so I'm guessing the next time we're going to actually see Dane is the, the Blade film, I guess. I, I I guess, now that we've seen that they're connected. Yeah. In one but, way. But I don't why would Blade would be work. coming for him and, like, the Ebony Blade? Yeah. I don't know. Well, because in the comics, the sword drinks the blood of enemies, right? And I guess that way so, yeah. it, corru it, it corrupts the mind and, you know, only the pure of heart can wield it without becoming terrible psychopaths because the idea is throughout history there's been black knights who have been heroes and black knights who have been, like, horrible, murderous tyrants. Yeah, maybe Blade thinks, like, the, like the person who wields that blade is, like, a vampire? Maybe because it drinks blood. Yeah. Maybe he, maybe in uh, the MCU, the Ebony Blade uh, at one point belonged to Dracula. That could be very true, because I don't even know what the origin of the Ebony Blade is. Where, where is it from? <laughs> I, I can't remember. As the chat is saying, Black Knight led Ultra Force. Oh my God, yes, he did. <laughs> that fuck, he went to another universe and led Ultra Force. <laughs> wow, what a fucking history. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God werewolf by night halloween team up special actually yeah, I, haven't they mentioned werewolf by night is going to be in something or at least his human name got like name dropped somewhere or am i imagining he's getting things? a halloween special on disney oh, plus okay. <laughs> oh that's a real thing that's not a joke that's actually no, happening uh, yeah they cast the they cast the guy who's playing uh the character i can't remember what the guy's name was though that's crazy so yeah we're definitely leading up to some sort of midnight suns type team yeah so there you go yeah, but so, so yeah, a Turtles is, is pretty fucking good. I, I yeah, quite I, enjoyed it. I knew exactly, like, watching the film, I was like, yeah, this is exactly how a Turtles is in the comics. I enjoyed it because it was different. I feel like for so long people have been saying, like, oh, when is Marvel ever going to break this formula that they have? Then they did it. And people, like, and people oh, hated like it, this. yeah. That, that, that's what I found. It's so hilarious about it. They, they do everything that these people have been crying on Twitter for for years, yeah. and those same people say, no we don't like that go back to the formula please yeah and i'm sure a lot of the people who were the noisiest about it i'm sure it had nothing to do with the fact that eternals was more female and browner and blacker and queerer and the one straight yeah. blue-eyed white guy was an antagonist i'm sure that had nothing to do with their distaste for it either you yeah. know yeah yeah just just saying <laughs> but no i don't begrudge anyone for not liking eternals it is not for everyone I, no. I would argue this has probably been the most creative swing they've taken in a very long time it is yeah it, 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 it again when the movie was announced I was, I was excited for it but then i was also like yeah how can you do a movie with it's gonna like resonate with audiences this you can't just do guardians of the galaxy again part of me also feels like maybe this should have been a tv show yeah, a car, like a like a ten part TV show or something. Yeah, that that would have been my theory that this might have done a little bit better on television because yeah, yeah you would have had you everyone could have gotten a focus episode. The problem with that is though, I imagine I wouldn't put a pass if that was actually like uh, brought up to the table at one point. The problem Maybe. is people would compare it to uh, Inhumans. True. Yeah, and they probably don't want that. Also, too, I think Zhao wanted to do this. I think she mm -hmm. actually had a pitch because she was a fan. I think so, yeah. Like, they're like, hey, you know, what do you want to do? You know, would you like to direct a sequel to this, that, or the other? And she's like, give me Eternals. I want to do the Jack Kirby thing. Yeah. It, again, Which, it's unique and different. It is. And also lets you know that Zhao's got some pretty good fucking taste, you know, on top of also being an Academy Award winner. I want to do the Jack Kirby thing. Yeah because that's like some ultra nerd cred there do whatever you want i want the jack kirby thing. the jack kirby thing yeah the, the really obscure jack kirby thing <laughs> gimme 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 <laughs> <laughs> now what do you think about uh, a sequel because it's definitely going to get a sequel because uh oh yeah it's it's actually making quite a bit of money like like for a pandemic for a oh, movie yeah, yeah, that yeah. graded pretty low with critics and audiences it's making a lot yeah. of money 
that made me laugh too like oh eternals is a flop a failure you know getting bad reviews i'm like yeah it's still getting a massive box office though during a pandemic which is even crazier yeah yeah uh, yeah, I don't know, because they, like, did so much stuff in this, and now the team is split, which you, like, never do in writing. You never split the team. Well, again, like, going into, like, the team is split, you could do, like, an Empire Strikes Back thing. Mm. With that movie, most of the characters were split up. Right. Do they have any other villains? Because you've already done the Deviants, so what else do you do? Like, uh, the Deviants are, like, their go-to villains, basically. I, I guess you could do, like... Like, like G.I. Like, Joe and Cobra. Like like this one, like they the the the, the deviant that they, they had in there which is a a deviant uh from the comics Crow. Is he? Um, okay, I was gonna yeah, say but he's not like anything like this at all. No. Like, yeah, in fact they change a lot about the deviants where they're yeah. kinda more mindless monsters where in the books no, they're like dudes too they're like, people, like the eternal. Yeah, they're like people that like the celestials look down on they're just ugly and like yeah. in the same way that the eternals you know inspired stories of ajax and athena and icarus from greek mythology the deviants inspired like vampires and yeah. cyclops minotaurs and, ugly and stuff like that yeah i can see the movie sidestepping that because they're like whoa, whoa, whoa let me get this straight there's a whole villainous race who is villainous because they were born ugly yeah okay yeah we're not doing that <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's kind of silly um like like, again, to give Kirby credit, at least Apocalypse, it's like, oh, are they evil because they're on Apocalypse? No, nah, they're evil because they're jackasses and they just happen to live on Apocalypse. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, as Chemdog says, he could do uh, Gar the Deviant Priest, which was in a recent uh, Eternals book. Yeah, that would be a good one. You could also, like, take some, like, villains from other places that they're not going to use. Like, hey, are the X-Men going to fight the Brood right away? Maybe they should fight the Brood. That'd be interesting, yeah. Like, like you could make the, the Brood, like, maybe an offshoot of Deviants. Like, yeah. like, like some planet far away. Like, uh, if, like, the Deviants evolved into the Brood. Yeah. Could do the UFOs. Now nah, they're more Earth-type. You can't <laughs> send the UFOs in today. Ooh, someone said Death's Head. Yeah, that's fun, actually. I like Death's Head a lot, actually. Maybe have them fight the Shia. Ooh, that'd be fun. Someone said the High Evolution. I don't hate that either, actually. That's pretty good, yeah. Do you do He's you like, think as well with the sequel? Do you think now that they've done they've they've done the art house film? Yeah. Do you think maybe they'll go back to more traditional, uh, comic book movie with the sequel? I, I think so. Yeah, you reckon? I think so. I think they're like, you know, this did fine, but let's, you know, try and, you know, you know, do something a little bit more traditional. Because, like, I don't think they care about reviews that much so long as it makes money. Yeah. But then again, too, it also depends, you know, is Zhao going to win another Academy Award between then until now? Is she going to want to come back for a sequel? Is she going to want to come back is the thing. Is she going to want to? Because obviously, you know, Disney Marvel probably want to keep good relationships with such a rising star in young mm -hmm. Hollywood who, again is a freaking academy award owner yeah yeah so who knows yeah i could see them you know fighting some aliens in that one blast star you know, as a fun reference yeah I, I, again like the story would be split in two yeah because you got the eternals that got taken away from uh mm -hmm. uh by uh arishem and then you've got like athena and pip and eros having to like look for them maybe that's their way to like make the cast a little smaller yeah yeah and like split like actually like um uh, like signpost the 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 actual plots a little bit better it's like this is your yeah. a plot this is your b plot b plot yeah where in this one it was a little hard to tell what was a and what was b sometimes yeah yeah <laughs> can i also say selma hayek got probably the easiest job in the world in this one <laughs> i literally thought when she's dead in the first five minutes i'm like wow she went on all the media tour for this and she pieces out in the first five minutes yeah well she scattered throughout the film but yeah she, she i is. i kind of wish she'd like lived i mean i guess she she eternal she she can come back as like just ajax yeah you know again again yeah there's no saying she can't come back i watched her whole interview on the hot wings show and i assumed <laughs> like oh because she's gonna be in the whole movie right now i'm dead in the first five minutes and i only exist in flashback yeah, but again that was a good like sort of subversion of expectations Very much so. yeah you expect yeah, like, like her to be like because she was the leader and everything and you expect her to be like in there the whole time she just gets she's, murdered straight away <laughs> she's the prime she's the prime arc yeah also, also too can we talk about good casting too so yeah selma hayek and angelina jolie are two beautiful ageless space warriors who exist all throughout time 
yeah i buy it yep yeah, makes yep. sense that tracks <laughs> yep yep tracks definitely tracks yep <laughs> how old is selma hayek she's 300 or 30 i don't know <laughs> <laughs> we we didn't talk about it but i i really liked uh Thena and gilgamesh's like friend oh, relationship yeah. sort of thing oh yeah yeah we basically have a superhero with alzheimer's holy i can see yeah. why angelina jolie signed on to this she got a very meaty role in this yeah that that, that was really fun seeing that and they, they they lived in the australian outback and yeah and then uh gilgamesh was sort of like her carer yeah making his uh, own wine and everything there that actor is so cool i've tracked down a bunch of his korean movies don now, lee he's so yeah fun. He, he's don so, lee he's so good he's in train to busan he's in a train bunch of like their crime films he's in he's unstoppable in a, he's in a great western called the good the bad and the weird yes tarantino's in that for a minute yeah I, I saw Unstoppable this week, which is like a movie he made in 2018. Mm. Imagine Taken, but in Korea, and way more punching. Yeah, more violence, yeah. <laughs> like, like the dude's like a real like hard-bitten action star in Korea. I'm like, how have I not he, heard he, of this he dude? He is this built like great. a brick shit house as well. He yeah, is so he is. fucking buff. <laughs> And, and you see it in the movie too and like the movie doesn't make a big deal about it I'm like dude this guy is fucking strong S-T-R-O-N-K yeah. <laughs> he, he's so strong when he's like wearing like what is it just a white shirt and suspenders I'm like I bet I could pull that off it's like no you can't <laughs> only he can that's you only get that from punching people repeatedly and he plays the punchiest eternal yeah he, his whole deal is he creates like constructs and one of the mm -hmm. constructs was an infinity gauntlet ah nice yeah nice nice <laughs> also too saying i like how they made sprite human at the end so they don't have to explain why she ages yeah. in the sequel i never thought about that yeah. but good point yeah so she can just keep coming back and it's like oh why is she aging well she's human now <laughs> Yeah, we get, you, you're not old enough for us to throw you into the Disney fountain of youth that we keep throwing that, Samuel L. Jackson and everyone else in. That also means they can actually bring back an Eternal Sprite, like an like oh. Eternal Sprite, like recast the actress. Oh, that's and fun. Then, and I then, like but that. But have her still in the films as well as like the original Sprite. Oh, that's clever. Have your cake and eat it too. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I guess that's basically the show for this week, everyone. Just some news, just some catching up on stuff. We read books this week, but I don't think Matt and I read that much. We read the new Venom. I liked it. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Spider-Man continues to be fun. I like Spider-Man Beyond is really living up to its name in so much as that it's beyond even Spider-Man and not even Ben needs to be in every issue. Nope. Which is fine by me. Oh, the Warworld saga began this week. It did, and it started with a fucking bang it did it's really strong i'm happy to see that you know philip kennedy johnson is kind of getting what i think is going to be his magnum opus because like everything he's done has led to this moment it's all connected yeah in fact he pointed out some shit on twitter that i didn't even notice and that is that mongol is riding one of the monsters that he's... came through the radiation breach yeah he's got prep time he's got the only thing that can harm superman and has harmed superman he prepped like a mother he threw some magic at him which undid what apparently manchester black and uh enchantress have been doing to him so he's yeah. actually been old this whole time we yeah. just didn't know it, like since the beginning of uh that breach storyline or just like the ending of when he when he got attacked by that monster and i'm like not only is that super clever but that actually does more to add to the connective tissue to the morrison series uh, yeah again i don't know why people thought that morrison series without a canon it literally is referenced multiple times throughout this yeah. book. <laughs> well, I mean, they do leave in a rocket ship at the end of that instead of leaving in the ship they did have. It is and it isn't, is my thing. It both is and isn't in continuity. They 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 or... use that rocket to go to Metropolis. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and but you know, in you know, in fairness too, they teleport away, but then they're still not away because they have that special Batman Superman yeah. issue where they're still sticking around. They, they, that's, they use that rocket to go to that, yeah. <laughs> so that's fine, whatever. It's all good, but yeah. uh, that's good. They keep building the mystery of the hooded guy, who I'm one hundred percent certain is the Flasian storyteller from that annual. Yes, yeah, it will be because he was Cause talking he... about the future and things that and have stories. Been... Yeah, it is. It's definitely Which... that guy. Which the question then becomes, what the fuck is your problem, dude? <laughs> we also got ties into the United Planets and how they're like covering yeah, wow. up the Thelosians or something. Like some the Thelosians are like some unnameable race that you're not allowed to talk about. 
they're these real boogeyman. That's a great scene, too, because, you know, you got the old head of the United Planets writing his memoirs like, oh, I'm a nice old man who had never hurt anyone. Oh, thank you. It's like, Felasians, fuck them and fuck your mother. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't you tell anyone. <laughs> Just switches on a die. I love that. <laughs> Some good ass shit there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, was there anything else you read this week that you just want to talk about right quick? Uh, oh, that, that that Robin and Batman book came out from uh, Jeff Lemire. That was really great. I, I have that and Robins by Tim Seeley, and I wasn't sure which one I was going to get to cover this. But it looked good. I flipped through it. Uh, it. Does it look like what I think it looks like? And they're actually, you know, uh, combining Killer Croc story and Robin story. Finally, yeah, yeah. Uh, Killy, Killer Croc was uh, one of the sideshows in the circus that the Flying Graysons uh attended and it actually plays into the actual story where dick uh before he gets his actual robin costume was in like a black costume and then he designs mm. like the robin costume to be the antithesis of what batman would want just to piss him uh. off and he goes and like investigates some killer croc uh, uh related things and croc recognizes the costume because the costume is literally <laughs> his flying grayson's costume and it's like oh that's fun. who are you how do you know that costume are you dick grayson yeah, I've been saying forever that they should really have tied those two origins together because you have a circus and a circus sideshow freak. It just makes sense. Yeah. So that's my thing. Yeah, it, it was really good. And it was great as well to explore that 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 early Dick and Bruce relationship where uh, Dick finds everything Batman does, like, because he's 12 years old, he finds it all, like, unreasonable and, you know, all that sort of stuff where it's, like, it's pretty reasonable but then batman like overcompensates and like i read your diary so i made you like the perfect <laughs> robin costume uh, there's no secrets in my house you know i stepped on all your privacy and everything <laughs> yeah i'll probably get to that and i'll probably get to robins this week as well yeah but uh yeah this is basically it this week it was a light week which is fine by me because i need the time to catch up Absolute. on everything same there was a thing book that came out this week i wanted to read i bought it but i didn't actually oh, get a chance oh that came it. out this week yes it did oh wow it's, it's a mini series but it looks great it yeah. looks really good yeah i remember i remember when we talked about that when that was announced it looked really cool it's like yeah who doesn't love the thing i love the thing yeah i think they stealth launched like a new digital fantastic four book and i'm still like now give me the thing though yeah <laughs> I want to I wanna watch him, you know, talk about Ampetunia and all the other fun stuff he does <laughs> and say it's clobbering time. <laughs> He's the best. Oh, and Hellions had its penultimate issue this week, too. Oh, that's cool. Uh, it was wonderful. Uh, the Hellions started an international incident. <laughs> oh, as, uh, of course. Of course. And the big and the big ticking clock on this is like, okay, but is Krakoa going to back them up or is Krakoa going to throw them all under the bus? <laughs> Because they might, because that's like the whole reason the team was created, to have plausible deniability. Yeah. And it's Orphan Maker who does it. He kills a couple of dirty course cops. Of course it's fucking awesome, Maker. Because he's a child, yeah. and he kills two dirty cops, and he's like, what did I do? And it's like, oh, you might have just fucked us all, Orphan Maker. <laughs> I'd love, I'd love if that's what brings Krakoa down. Yeah, Orphan Maker. Or, 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 it's not, not Mystique and her, like, fucking games with Magination, Destiny yeah. or, or, like, Sabretooth and or, or any of the Orchers. Just fucking Orphan Maker, often two corrupt cops. <laughs> it's it's a beautifully put-together scene, too, because the idea is the right, who is one of the many anti-mutant groups, has set up <laughs> shop in Arizona, and they have a fucking Doom Fortress out in the Arizona <laughs> desert, and they're, like, stockpiling weapons and, you know, training insurgents and everything, and the cops are like, well, we could go deal with it, but we don't want another Waco situation, so I guess we're just gonna live and let live with these anti-mutant militants <laughs> living out here. And then the second the Hellions come in, beat them up and everything, and it looks like the job, it's like, hey, you better stop right there, mutants. <laughs> We saw what you did. <laughs> and Orphan Maker's just having none of it, so he just murders them both. Oh, no. <laughs> and the irony of, like, oh, yeah, you had no problem with the anti-mutant group here, but the second the mutants come here. Yeah, just pin it on the uh, pin it on the right. <laughs> there you go. That's the Well, it's funny because there's a great little page where it's, like, it's an email someone sent Emma Frost, and she's like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, what do we do? What do we do? How do we spin this in the media? How do we spin it? <laughs> No, okay, the, the right were all criminals, though, right? They've all killed people. They all had warrants on them. You know, the people in Arizona didn't want this. No, we can totally spin it. We can totally spin any damage done. 
it's great. She's her. I think, look, if I got to psychically, you know, push a couple people and make them think it was their idea, I'll do it. <laughs> it's very fun. Very fun book. Helene's can't believe the next issue is going to be the last one. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. All right. Then is, is that everything, Matt? I think we done did all the things. I think so. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for coming and hanging out, everyone. This ended up being a much longer episode than I thought it was going to be, but it always feels like it is. It, whenever we have, like, less news, it always ends up being, like, the two-hour show. Absolutely. And because we didn't do a show last week, you got an extra 30 minutes just for you. Yeah. So thank you, everyone, for watching and listening and hanging out. This is a lot of fun. Matt and I will be back again next week. As always, if you want to help the show, you can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month. We try and get you the audio version and the video version right away before it goes live on Wednesday. Uh, Ad-free, which is good if you're interested in that kind mm -hmm. of thing. You can also head over to Wild Bill Soda there. Use the promo code Cape Joel, and you can get yourself 10% uh, off. Uh, I'm actually courting a couple new sponsors as well for the holiday season. So if you're looking for gift ideas, oh, oh, I got some gift ideas for you. That, Don't worry. That holiday themed Viagra. Got the holiday Viagra. It's chewable and minty. <laughs> Tastes like candy canes and gingerbread it's in, cookies. <laughs> it's dipped in fudge like those Oreos that are dipped in the white fudge, but only at Christmas though. <laughs> If you dip a Oreo in white fudge after January, you're going to jail. <laughs> I don't make the rules. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Again, you can check me and Matt out at Twitter. Uh, always stay up to date on when the show's coming out. Be it on Twitter, be it on Twitch. Subscribe to Matt's channel if you haven't already, because, you know, that's where the show goes live. Yeah. So yeah, that'll do it for us, everyone. We'll be back again next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.